This is the unofficial One Piece podcast, episode 324 for the week of Monday, June 23rd, 2014. My name is Zach. And my name is Steve. On today's podcast, we have a very special guest, uh, translator for One Piece in Weekly Shonen Jump. We have Stephen Paul. Hey, Stephen. Hey, what's up, guys? Good to be back. Good to have you back. Uh, you were here a week ago, but you're back translating yeah, the manga. two weeks ago. No, we had you for the volume 74 one. So it was only yeah, the, that was yeah, I guess that was ago. two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you got me this time, Stephen. Um, <laughs> so we have a lot of cool stuff coming up for you. On this episode, we have the return of the manga recap. It's, it's a really fun manga recap, so regardless of what you thought of this chapter, I think you'll enjoy this one. That's for chapter 750, so check that out. We have a Toonami recap. Uh, for episode, I believe it's 259, and an anime recap for episode 600, and I think it was 650, I remember, because there were 250s, and I think that's the case here. Um, we have some really cool stuff to announce for Anime Expo right off the top here. Um, we have already announced that we will have our panel uh, Friday, July 4th at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time, of course, in LP4. That's our One Piece podcast panel giving away prizes. Hopefully we'll have some special guests. We usually, Anime Expo is the one con where we usually are able to bring people on the panel to talk to them. Uh, Steve, this is going to be your first time hosting uh, a panel there at Anime Expo. You're it's, my first, it's my first time going to Anime Expo. That's true, I forgot. Um, and we also uh, will be having... The premiere of, of the final cut, or we hope, uh, for One Piece Podcast Goes to Japan. That's going to be in Videos 3 on Saturday, July 5th at 9.30 a.m. Pacific in Videos 3 again. Um, it's worth getting up for. Uh, I'm really hoping we will have it out around this time. I, I, I was hoping we'd have it out a while ago. It's still going through the approvals process. Um, and, and we really appreciate the, the uh, patience from everyone out there concerning that. But if you live anywhere on the West Coast going to Anime Expo, this is your chance to see it. Please send us your feedback on Twitter, Facebook, email, wherever it may be. Uh, Jose and us, would, uh, Jose and myself and Greg uh, would really appreciate it. Just hashtag OPP Japan while you're watching it, after you watch it, before you watch it, whenever to let us know that you are there. We know it's at a crazy, well, not that crazy, but a somewhat early time on Saturday. We understand. Um, but get out there, go to that. Even if you come a little late in the in the movie, you know, see what you can and, and let us know what you think. Um, it's it was a lot of fun, and I'm really happy with with the product that uh, the final product that uh, Jose has put into put together. His a uh, swan song before heading to CNN. Um, there's also uh, going to be an official uh, One Piece industry panel that's going to be Friday at. 4.30, and that is an LP1 uh, Petrie Hall. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that, Stephen? Um, yeah, sure. So I don't know exactly what the full scope of this is. I I don't believe, I, as far as I know, I don't know if there's going to be like a big announcement of any kind, but I do know that uh, people from Viz will be there. Uh, Alexi, the, the editor of One Piece, asked if I wanted to be on, so I will probably be there as well, although it will be, from what I understand, a very crowded bench. Um, there will be folks from Funimation, of course, uh, Bandai as well, because the, uh, the new One Piece game is going to be out very soon. Um, so... So I think it's just going to be a big old love fest for uh, all the different One Piece stuff that is out there, um, you know, in whatever form you you choose to uh, partake. So yeah, come that it should be fun. Uh, I have no idea what to expect, but um, it'll be exciting. And I I don't know I could be wrong, but I believe Sasaki might be there as well. So wow, um, lots of uh, lots of folks. It's really exciting to see, to see something like this. We haven't really seen this since like 2007, whenever One Piece was announced, I think by Funimation, they did a One Piece panel, or 2008, mm. I, one of those years. Um, 
at, at AX. Um, so it, it's it's very exciting to see, and I'm excited. Maybe something cool will come out. We really don't know, but mm-hmm. my fingers are crossed personally. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I, I know Josh will be hanging around AX. Uh, that's the brand manager for Funimation for One Piece. So um, hopefully we'll have him involved in some way in something uh, during that weekend. Um, <clears throat> and also, uh, I'd be, uh, I'd be remiss to not mention, uh, that Dennis, of course, will probably be leading in some way the cosplay meetup. That's going to be the one piece cosplay meetup, of course. And that's at 2 PM on that same Friday. So just to go through things in order, cosplay meetup Friday, July 4th at 2 PM industry, the one piece industry panel, uh, the Shonen Jump presents one piece Friday at that same Friday at 4 30 PM. Uh, our Anime Expo panel is going to be that same Friday again, July 4th, 7.30 p.m. in LP4. And then Saturday morning, wake up and watch some OPP Japan. Um, wow. What That's a, a lot of One Piece. That's, yeah, it's <laughs> a lot of One Piece for one day. Uh, yeah. For a 24-hour period. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot. Um, but I think... I, that's it's it's a good thing we we never would have seen something like this when we were starting or a few years ago um so it, it's great to see that kind of attention um and of course there's a ton of other cool stuff going on at ax um and steven uh you'll be at our panel right yes yeah good um it's always nice i mean i don't get to be there but i i would love to i wish i could be there um one of these one of these years we'll i guess get you to otakon or something um yeah to do something yeah we we should we could do a steven panel it's the the one piece podcast presents <laughs> steven our very special guest steven paul um <laughs> where he does his own voice <laughs> <laughs> he does a send your pink for us the entire time and <laughs> then we'll follow that up with a steve's one man show um anyway uh We'll also be at Otakon. Uh, we'll probably give more details about that in the coming weeks, uh, since I don't think we have many details about that at this point. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to be there all three days, which is which is disappointing. But um, I'll, I'll probably be there. I'll definitely be there the during the weekend. Um, I think that's everything. So you guys ready to get into the show? Yeah, that's right. This is the manga recap for chapter 750, Flashpoints. It has been two weeks, guys, since we have done a uh, manga recap, if you could believe it. Uh, it feels like just two weeks ago. I don't believe it. <laughs> uh, so uh, we talked about this a few weeks ago. What happened to Oda was that, uh, well, Stephen, why, why don't you explain in brief? Okay. Um, yeah. So if you remember last year, he um, he had was hospitalized for, what was it, like paratonsillitis or something like that. Um, you know, it was an inflammation of his tonsils. And uh, he went into the hospital to recover from that. But apparently ever since, um, he had been, you know, his, his tonsils, his throat would be sore whenever he got tired. And he said, um, you know, it's hard, it's we don't know for sure, but it's easy to kind of draw the line between that and all of the breaks, you know, kind of regular breaks that he was taking. And so he basically decided, you know what, I'll just get the tonsils removed altogether. And then hopefully, you know, with a little bit of, of rest from that, uh, I will be back to, you know, 100 um, percent to health rather than being at, you know, 75 percent all the time, even when he's taking a break. So. Uh, hopefully it's better, you know, hopefully it's better for him in the long run. That's so uh, his comment this week was, I'd rather be healthy, but busy instead of on vacation and in pain. Sorry for all the trouble I've caused everyone on my on many fronts. Uh, so, caused us a lot of trouble. <laughs> Steve, I love no. I love what you posted. You should be sorry. What was it? No, uh, William posted the translation and my response was, geez, what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and someone's like, why is he an ass? And I'm like, sarcasm uh no it's it's the internet sometimes it's hard to read the sarcasm but with steve i assume everything he says is sarcastic it's probably a safe assumption anyway oda really outdid himself i think this week with some of uh some of his work why don't we start with the cover of shonen jump i mean what do you guys think about this 
I I love the motif of the uh, the strings all over the place um, mm-hmm. with Luffy grabbing the string. And in fact, if you look at the table of contents and like the uh, the One Piece summary page, there are strings all across like the background of them. So it's like a theme with the uh, the design of the issue. It's really cool. Wow, I never noticed that. Luffy does not like your pinky string of the. <laughs> uh, that's I, I, like a that's like a Japanese thing, right? Right. It's usually it's the, it's the red string, in fact. And yeah, red, red so. pinky string of love, and Luffy's just like I'm asexual. <laughs> I, I I don't know what order I'm putting things in, but uh, the tsunami episode this week actually had a lot of that kind of shading too, which I feel like we don't see at all in One Piece anymore. It's like that kind of you know that dark, yeah. ominous looking stuff. Um, I think we got. So I think we've had covers where we've had like Shonen Jump covers where we've had similar shading, but I feel like it's it's been a long time. Um, also, nice to just see Doflamingo in color. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like that doesn't happen. He's so gotten often. a lot of no, he's gotten a lot of color treatment. Yeah, he did get the what was it the Taiwan uh, One Piece uh, Ten One Piece event. Uh, yeah, I believe that's something. yeah the one with his he's got his hand in front. And, the, of right and they had a volume uh, seventy four promotional poster. I know that we tweeted that or we might have posted about it. Uh, he's been, he's been getting a lot of color love. That's true. I usually we don't see secondary characters colored like this. Speaking of Stephen, what's on the cover spread? Color spread. Uh, well, the color cover spread is uh, well. It's I guess it's the the well. It's not really entirely the Coliseum thing because you know Zoro wasn't there and, and Law wasn't there. But it's it's basically everyone else. Uh, all of the the scoundrels we know and love or hate. Um, it's the you know, attack all, squad. The the squad. Yeah, right yeah. Here. I don't know the guys, the, the guys who are all after Doflamingo right now, um, minus Kiros, I guess. I don't, I don't see him. Um, but yeah, we got everybody. We got uh, you know Cavendish, Abdullah, and G. We got Sai, uh, Ideo, all the guys in the background, or Lumbus and uh, King Elizabello and, and Moosey. And oh yeah, there he is yeah, hiding, hiding behind right everyone there. else. Because yeah. you can't yeah. have a color spread without an animal. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's no, true. you can't have a color spread without Moosey. I'll tell you right now. I think the one thing that really pops out on this color spread to me is uh, Blue Gilly. His hair yeah. just looks yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, think I don't know that's why. Like I, my favorite part. I don't know why I never would have guessed that he would have blue hair. That but... makes no sense. Well, he's Blue Gilly. <laughs> um, yeah, no. It actually I thought reminds... he was just gonna have blue gills on his neck. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it reminds me of a you know a, a joke. Obviously, you know he's he's based off of Bruce Lee, and so there's sort of a a, a pun in there. But it, it reminds me too of uh, I think it was 20th Century Boys, where there was a dog that someone had, and they called him Blue Three um, because oh, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, pronounced, it's pronounced the same way in in Japanese as Bruce Lee, Bruce D. So. Oh, that's what that was. I I yeah. thought that was the weirdest name for a dog. Um, yeah. <laughs> but now it's not. Now I may name my dog Blue Three. Um, <laughs> mostly for the looks. <laughs> uh, no, I, I really, really love this color spread. Uh, I love the Motley Crew color spreads that we get, like the Impel Down one. I think we – did we get a Marineford one? Um, I can't, re- I can't remember. Probably not. Um, I mean, we got some with like the Impel Down crew, but I think right. after that, we never really got, we got the Warlords, um, which I guess technically was a Motley crew. Um, but, but I like seeing people in color spread that's that in color spreads that we don't normally get to see. It's a, it's a nice yeah. treat. It's a nice departure. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously I wouldn't want to see that every week, but that's, I think what makes it more special here. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of like a it's more of a volume cover type illustration than his usual stuff, because, you know, usually it's like a kind of like a mural of one big scene with all of the the straw hats. But here, you know, they're all blocked out. You got the guys in the background that are just like still images as well as the group picture in the front. Um, He doesn't usually do that with his his uh, cover chapter cover. I never really noticed this till now, but I I actually haven't looked at photos so i might not know what i'm talking about but howard Din's helmet looks very similar to uh uh dory's helmet mm. uh, I almost yeah. like they, well i, I mean al- they're from the same place so. but i almost yeah. like got the two mixed up because they look very similar they do yeah i, I mean i'm sure it would, um, it would be pretty cool if if oda did like a design you know confluence 
to like bring that connection together because that would be pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. They might be related. I, who knows? Maybe. But uh, other than that, I, I really enjoy uh, Bartolomeo and Zoro's poses here. I think Luffy looks a little flat. I mean, it's a couch, Luffy. Take a seat. <laughs> you're making me nervous luffy but i think everyone everyone else is just so kind of everyone's got their their dukes up and all that and but luffy does too but i, I don't think he's as uh he doesn't seem to be as uh, the word escapes me now but uh ready to go I, I don't know. Yeah, what you're, yeah. He, he's I know what you're more trying relaxed to say. than some of the other characters there. Well, because he's got this covered, guys. Come on. Um, all right, Steve, push it, please. What's going on in the first page? Why don't we get into this? Uh, so on the the first page here, uh, Mr. Pika's head fell off and he stopped moving. Uh, so that catches you up to uh, where we are right now. It's been a uh, while. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's a scene of chaos. Um, you know, Pika previously was uh, kind of barreling down on the town. And, of course, as you remember, the uh, uh, the team kind of uh, coaxed him out of his giant form uh, to fight him. And uh, now we have the uh, the aforementioned cast of uh, attackers who are charging uh, across Pika's shoulders. Uh, they're attacking again. They're all it's a foot race, basically, to see who will get Doflamingo first. Uh, and they're all wasting energy yelling about it uh, rather than just running. Uh, and it'd be funny if they all get, by the time they reach the top, they're just tired. It's like, oh, we shouldn't have done all that yelling. <laughs> they've, all, they've all lost their voices. Uh, and <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile uh, on top of the, uh, I guess, on, on top of the the big palace mound, uh, we have you can see at a long distance view uh, the uh, the officers of the Del Flamingo family, who we'll see more of in a bit, uh, as the uh, the henchmen are firing their guns in a vain attempt to uh, to keep the, the mighty gladiators at bay. Steve. And we got a nice spread here. We got guys like uh, Eggman and Orlumbus, uh, Tanshin Zhao. Uh, if I name all the characters, I pretty much did not say when I was in the Coliseum. Yeah, but uh, a... Cavendish, uh, Liz Bale, they're all... Cavendish's just... horse. Yeah, and Cavendish's... Uh, what's the color of Cavendish's white horse? Um... <laughs> I don't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a good thing the horse. Well, I mean, it, Kevin. Yeah, it is his name, White Horse Cavendish, right? That's yeah, White Knight. White Knight. White Knight. White White Knight. Knight. Yeah. Um, yeah he's you know, not a horse. Because <laughs> I feel like with One Piece, every time some character just doesn't have their hair colored in, I think everyone just goes to blonde. Yeah. Most of the time, and then he no, does, his hair is right? his hair is green. Oh, it's green. I'm sorry, I'm colorblind. No, no, so. no, 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 it's yellow. No, his hair is blonde. Okay. Exactly. Um, <laughs> It. It, I was yeah. my whole point was it'd be just kind of humorous if his horse wound up being no, I, I, like I, I, fuchsia pink or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, out of their way because they're just knocking down all these uh, schmucks and of course, uh, uh, if you, Do if Flamingo you, and his schmucks. <laughs> yeah, Do Flamingo and his schmucks. Uh, you know, it's it's but, funny that you use that word because I just put that in the script for the next chapter. <laughs> There's going to be some schmucks in there. So. Schmucks is a great word. It's, it's a great word, yeah. You got to think, think Yiddish. I mean, that's yeah. what yeah, it is. Anything yeah. that has a sh at the beginning. Those Mel, with those Mel Brooks movies. <laughs> and, uh, and if in case you wondered why I had this page, because eek, <laughs> such power. <laughs> It's Dellinger, of course, and uh, he's sitting down in a pretzel. Uh, he's got some shading on his uh, lower left thigh, and he's got his hand up to his mouth. I'm not going to spend all this time describing Dellinger. I'm just trolling you people. Uh, <laughs> that should be the new troll face, is the, <laughs> is the Dellinger face should just be on everything. It's a pretty good one. It's. I mean, it, it is equally trolly because his yeah, face kind of totally obnoxious. It maybe looks just, very like, similar to the actual troll face, which and, annoys me to look at. And I mean, you could, or you could always just do the act of pulling a Dellinger. You know, someone's <laughs> like, "Oh, I'm having a great day," and then you just like throw a pie in their face. Like, wh- 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 why would you throw a pie in my face? Like, eek. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't, I don't, you're like eek, and then like you skip away. You know. Gotcha, I, want, I, think, I think Steve next con we do I just want to see you at a panel acting like Dellinger just do when, like a one man show when the moon Steve, Steve is dry Dellinger. like a big banana cream pie <laughs> eek <laughs> okay 
Uh, keep going, <laughs> please. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame that uh, for AX, you know, the panel I, uh, you know, I sent in to request uh, Steve just voices Paul Lind acting as Dellinger <laughs> for an hour. Did not get picked up. I'm really disappointed. Oh, I thought that was going to be a two in the morning on a Saturday night. <laughs> two in the morning. <laughs> Is it people just strolling drunk? Like, well, I guess I'll tell you. <laughs> this guy's talking like that 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 gay guy on Penelope Pit Stop. <laughs> I'll give him a good rating. <laughs> uh, we should move on. I um, guess. Mark Vias is like, they've gone mad. It's, um, uh, what's his name? Gladius. Uh, Gladius. Gladius. Super Gladius. Saiyan 3 Gladius uh, says... Uh, <laughs> It's like, still, they defy the young master? Like, well, obviously. Um, you know, everyone's just getting their shit in right here. Uh, and then we got Lao G saying, like, they won't make it this far. They'd have to break through Fujitora's Navy blockade. I'm surprised he didn't have a G word there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's all I think Oda missed an opportunity there. He mm-hmm. misses an opportunity every time that happens. And Baby 5, after looking through her knocks, um, she says, uh, seems it was Straw Hats who stopped Pika after all. And we get our... Our Skypea esque uh, map, which, which is out. really, really necessary after this break. I mean, I'm oh, sure yeah. if you're reading it in volume form, you'd be like, "I get it," but especially with the whole new reconfiguration, it's this was very nice to see. But, but here's a rundown: we got uh, we got some of uh, Doflamingo's upper class schmucks, uh, Mach-Vice, <laughs> Gladius, Baby the Five, upper class schmucks, yeah. Louchy and Dellinger, on top of. Uh, how many? Pla- I guess that's the third plateau. Uh, not you know Mesa. Well, no, that's the second one. There are steps, like, I guess. Kind I, of. I, sorry, I include the palace as the first one, but okay. Unless we could get technical here. Uh, Luffy and Law. Here. Luffy and Law are on the third plateau. Zoro is fighting Pika on top of Pika. Uh, the Navy, uh, Fujitora and Bastille, are somewhere down. In- I really like Fujitora's <laughs> cute little scowl. <laughs> <laughs> Space. And of course, the gladiators and Kiros are heading that way towards the Navy. Uh, and we go to Team Kiros. <laughs> yeah, why, why is it team called Kiros? Team Kiros? Isn't it just himself? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a one man team. Yeah. One man, one leg, that's one a, team. That, that sounds like a wrestling gimmick there. Well, that's isn't that the he's U.S. The, soccer? He's the one man team, Maggle. Isn't Kiros. the U.S. soccer thing one nation, one team or something? So it's one man, one leg, one team. Yeah, but there's people on that team. Of course, it's not like multiple teams. <laughs> it's true. Man, USA 1 really sucked, but USA B, man, they kicked ass. Today. <laughs> uh, let me get through this page. page, uh, page. Yeah, this and, is taking a while. <laughs> and some people are like, so just come quietly, Kiros. We're not going to fight you. <laughs> Apparently, there's Why not. are they Scottish? <laughs> We're not going to fight you. <laughs> It's Scottish, Irish, whatever. It's not the money we want. I can't. I can't do accents. I Why don't you just give up? Done. We're not going to fight you. <laughs> um, so uh, they, they yell. They yell like heroes from who's hiding behind some shattered brick wall. There. Uh, it's only a matter. Of, I can't do accents. It's only a matter of time before you know. Uh, before we all die. So why don't we just you know. We, we need to seize you. We don't really have any other choice here. Kiros is like, I do not blame you for your choice, but it means that I must make even more haste, for I, too, have something to achieve. Um, and he runs through a, a stream of bullets there to go to where he's going, um, which I guess is after Do Flamingo. I mean, like, wh- why is he in the middle of nowhere there? We, we don't know. I mean, you would presume that he would be after Doflamingo, but he hasn't said that. And God knows every other character has said it a million times that they're after Doflamingo. So I feel like it must be something else that he's doing. Yeah, I think I think he has something else in, in mind. He's going in the wrong direction because everyone else, as, as we'll see uh, a little later in the page, is in the right direction or going got, in the right you, direction. You got to feel bad about yourself when Zoro is actually going in the correct <laughs> direction and you are not. <laughs> well, I, I mean, maybe he's off somewhere else. I, I have to assume, for Zoro, I would assume he's trying to go there, you know. But anyway, um, we head toward the former Royal Plateau, uh, where we get another little map showing. Uh, what is a. Am I reading this retinue? 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 I have not heard of that word before. I'm sorry. It's, uh, I'm sure Ed is know. yelling at me from beyond. It's uh, it's all of his followers and um, and whatnot. We've got himself court of uh, hangers on. 
that's a good word. I should. I don't know when I'm going to use that word, but it's it's a good word. Um, so yeah, his his group is a. Uh, has made their way to the surface uh, after traveling up some very convoluted path, as we see there. Uh, there's Usopp, Robin, the Tontadas, Rebecca, Bartolomeo, and Hack. Tank is there somewhere in the Coliseum. Yeah, um, that was kind of random. <laughs> just Tank is just off on his own. <laughs> I don't know why it's important, but there he is. Um, yeah. Oh, he's up on the plateau we see later in the page. That's why it's important. Okay. Um, which makes sense. Of course, he'd want to see King Riku. Um, he's told, talked about his allegiances to him several times and we, he was the head of the guard, right? That's what, yeah, that's true. Um, uh, Bartolomeo was, is really sad that Luffy isn't up there after all of that. Um, can someone do it? Well, I guess, uh, Steven, you know what he sounds like mm-hmm. more than me? Uh, I don't know. It, he just kind of sounds like a goon to me. <laughs> Barty, you know, isn't he kind of all like. Doesn't he kind of sound like Cletus, the slack trout local, when he really gets into it? It's like, yeah, yeah. Kind oh, of. Uh, I don't see Mr. Luffy no more. Yeah. He, he is a super. <laughs> hey, Ma, get off the <laughs> roof. Uh, so, ha- and so Robin's like, of course. I mean, that's pretty obvious. And uh, Bartolomeo doesn't understand why that's so obvious. Um, and. Who is it? Oh, I guess That's Bartolome. Usopp. Oh, that is Usopp who says that. Yeah, he never stays yeah. in the same spot for more than five minutes. Usopp knows him. Um, and Rebecca. Oh, I'm sorry. Bartolomeo. Yeah, that's the freedom of the king of the pirates. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, going back and forth. Oh, God. Bartolomeo is ridiculous. We just started seeing his ridiculousness in the, in the anime. So it's. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Steven. Um, and Leo looks and sees that stone monster, uh, and they're, they're like all the Tentadas, I guess maybe since they were underground before this, they, they didn't realize what had happened with the, uh, the change in the landscape up on the surface. So they're like, why is the palace over there? Um, they're all confused. And, uh, meanwhile, well, tiny. Over, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Rebecca sees that uh, a bunch of the, the Don Quixote schmucks are uh, climbing up the the netting of Robin's arms, I think. Yeah, those are, uh, yeah that's what it looks Coming like. up from below. And uh, she said, OK, well, if everyone else has uh, climbed up from our group, I guess I'll just uh, like uh, it's not really a very good plan from their perspective to uh, climb up these magical arms that are created <laughs> by the people at the top. Well, they don't know where it comes from or if yeah. it's, if it's Surely permanent. They won't dis- <laughs> just disappear randomly. Yeah, yeah, they won't disperse this uh, this net. I mean, this, oops, this is I, a really uh, this is a really cool us, power fighting chance. This is a really cool power from Robin that we haven't seen before. Um, yeah. I, I mean, we've noticed that her powers have certainly uh, become a little more extensive, so it's cool to see mm. see it in action here. Yeah. Uh, so the the creepy net of uh, living human arms uh, disappears. <laughs> All the guys fall off. Uh, I'm imagining scene. that's a Wilhelm scream there. <laughs> at least at least ten of them simultaneously. Yeah. Um, and then somehow. Viola just finds a key uh, with no no preamble or leading up to it or whatever. Oh, just, hey, here's a key. Uh, she was probably and, looking for it. Oh, it just, it looks just, like she was, like, looking. I found just, it. Just destroy it now. <laughs> <laughs> don't get my um, but, hopes up. But then again, we don't have Mr. 3 here this time to. Oh, God. Well, it's uh, what we were talking about in Marineford. Remember, uh, Steve, what was Pavlov's, uh, Pavlov's gun or Pavlov's key, whatever it is? When you have the key, it has to be used. And, of course, Check, Law's not going to be in that forever. Chekhov's gun. <laughs> Pavlov's gun. Pavlov's, Pavlov's is gun. the one with the, sl- the saliva and Just the dog. Just shoot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, was, that was Lasso. That was Pavlov's gun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mixing that's, up. Uh, that's a great episode title. <laughs> I'm mixing up psychological. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting so many titles here. Yeah, they're all live uh, here. Uh but of course, <laughs> no. And the great thing is, oh, Stephen didn't point that out. I would have accepted that. Like, I would not have been like, "Wait a second, that doesn't make sense." But I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's very smart of you, Zach." <laughs> uh, uh, good reference. Of, co- 
<laughs> but of course, the the key is the key to Law's cuffs, which I think we had been wondering like the last chapter or two, like where did the key go or why isn't there a key? Um, and apparently it just fell off while they were horsing around on the uh, the plateau up there before Luffy uh, shot off with his his gum gum powers. And uh, so now the now the quest is to get the key to to Law somehow. Um, but there's. There's still a score to settle here. Riku doesn't understand why Viola would be helping them. They're pirates. Um, and Viola's going to set him straight here. She says, yes. Uh, and, you know, guess what? We have this sham of peace here. These are the people who are going to help us uh, break out of this, you know, spiral of of suffering. I'm putting my hopes in them. And there's a an adorable little Tentata just hanging on her i I was i was gonna say before (laughs) before we finish this page there's like the totatas just everything they're doing i find hilarious and they're just (laughs) they're just being too damn cute and just crawling and everyone i know it's it's fantastic uh steve we're adorable (laughs) sorry they like to crawl people and then viola gets into this whole thing it's like oh yeah the world government is the one that gave uh you know doflamingo a title and allowed him to you know get away with everything and uh, yeah, look what that look what that's done to us. It's like I'm not going to go over to I'm, I'm not going to ask that same government to help us out. Um, uh, sorry, and you know just because uh, just because the navy goes around you know waving the flag of so called justice. I also want to think we don't have a certain brand of justice that Fujitora has yet. So like you know like how you know Akainu had absolute justice. Uh, you know. Maybe Fujitora could have so-called justice. It could be. Well, I was gonna I was gonna joke about like frontier justice, but I don't think that actually really applies to the way that Fujitora thinks. I, I'm, I'm kind of that. It's a really interesting. He he clearly has a very different philosophy from and, and most of the yeah. Marines we've seen. And yeah. I'm curious. I, he clearly has justice and believes in the Marines, but he also kind of joined during the draft as far as. It, Mm-hmm. from what we know and we could go into that for a long time so i'm not gonna yeah. delve into there mm-hmm. go ahead steve okay uh she says like hey they can't hear the voices of the victims that they themselves have created uh you know the ears of the elites you know just you know they they turn a deaf ear to uh and currently our country are the victims which is just like, hey, at least you know the the pirates. At least their words are true. They got some, you know, they have some heart behind it. And Riku flashes back to uh, Luffy talking on the transponder sail. It's like, I- I- I'll I'll kick Doflamingo's ass for you. Just 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 stay with my people. And the Tontadas once again are grabbing everyone's attention. They're like, uh, it's like just look at him, King Riku. And uh, Riku's, and Riku's like, oh, yes, the man with the five star uh, wanted level. And it's like, this is Uso N, also known as God Usopp. And he just holds up the the victory sign, like, yo, <laughs> that's me. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Leo just, uh, the all the Tontadas just start crying just out of sheer pride. It's like, he is our hero. He whisked his wife for our sake. To undo the toy curse that has afflicted us for a whole decade, we shed tears at the sight of his courage. It is true. He was. He did <laughs> risk his life. Um, this people, is tough. This is a lot more toned out of talk than usual. <laughs> Steven could probably take it over for you if you really No, no, it's fine. It. It's okay. A, it's, it's a lot more than usual. Usually you get like a few, but now it's like, and and Luffy Len is the captain of our hero. King Riku, the Straw Hat Land crew, is the light of hope for all dressed Rosa. They might be pirates, but we believe in them to the end. Yeah, that's which, a lot of. Which is not saying much because they believe anyone to the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> King Riku just said, I'm like, well, I'll take your words with like. The, the dot, dot, dot means yeah. I don't, you're not very reliable, but I'll believe my daughter. But His eyes kind of just shift to the side. Like, yeah. And Rebecca's like, Viola. It's like, I'll go take the key to Lucy. And she's like, no, Rebecca, it's too dangerous. <laughs> you can't go out there. Well, you, can't, you can't leave out the last line there, though. 
Uh, she said, but Rebecca's like, I don't want to just stand here waiting. And then uh, Bartolomeo with just his creepy face and his creepy fingers are just like, wait, you're going to Mr. Luffy? I'll totally go with you. <laughs> That's just like the face of a man you could just. That is so creepy. Trust. It, look, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't put that. It's like his fingers. Like what? what <laughs> that's like the pose you do when you're creeping up on somebody. <laughs> what is he planning on doing, you know, Luffy? You know what he he looks like? He looks like that guy who said like his spirit animal was a cat, and he got all those like tattoos and implants and stuff to make him look like a cat. I forget what that guy's name was. That guy has um, a man. name, and why would I care? Yeah, what his name it, he's a re- he was real famous in the body like modification Mix. thing. Oh. He was Mr. On, I'm sure he was on like Ripley's Believe It or Not. Yeah, that sounds like yeah. a Ripley's. Mr. Thing. Mr. Christopheles or <laughs> Cats of Matitas. Oh, cat, New York joke. No one which, gets. Which, whichever <laughs> cast member of Cats he was. Um, I think it's my turn, isn't it? Um, yeah. anyway, to get away from Mr. Catman, another great episode title there. Um. Rebe- uh, Rebecca and Viola go uh, go into a heart to heart. No, you're a convict here. If you go down there, you'll be in terrible, terrible danger. No, no. Uh, I guess that's Aunt, right? Isn't that the relationship we have here? Uh, yes. No. Yeah. No anti violence. I'm, I'm I'm 16. I can handle myself. <laughs> I'll now. be fine. I do what I want. Do you <laughs> see what I do? You see what I'm wearing right now? I'm fine. <laughs> My niece Rebecca just wears the most scantily clothes and goes out and fights people. Whatever. <laughs> I do what I want. I'm Rebecca. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> okay. And we ruined Rebecca. <laughs> um. And Leo and Cub are like, don't. And Dak. Hit. No, I'm not doing this. Uh. That ace. <laughs> you could do it if you want. We can go across the rooftops. <laughs> Me and Cub will take her, Princess Viola. I, uh, I kind of uh, wish uh, Cub was talking there because Cub, I, the voice I hear in my head for him is like the voices like Eric Cartman gives to like his stuffed animal friends. Like that's a really good question, Eric. <laughs> that's, that's how I I hear Cub talk. I, I was imagining, you know, there's the little questlamation point there, which is presumably <laughs> Viola. But I want to believe that that's actually Cub, and he's like, "Yeah, wait, what?" <laughs> you know, when I read this chapter the first time, I did not find any of these situations humorous. So this is this is changing my view of this chapter. It's okay. It's because someone will complain. <laughs> Um, you know, that was a really serious moment right there with the tone totters. You know? Just messed it up. <laughs> like it's the freaking tone totters. I love what that. It has to die for me to completely take this situation a hundred percent seriously. I don't think we've like. I think the last time we've taken a hundred percent a chapter one hundred percent seriously was Ace's death, and since then we've kind of, I think, uh, gone backward a lot. <laughs> um, kind of ruined any goodwill we built there. Um, so Rebecca, uh, not Rebecca. I'm gonna mix these two up now all the time. Uh, Viola is like what, across the roof, rooftops, and do you want to? Does someone want to take the tontadas? I feel like I'm not gonna do them justice because I'm not gonna do them justice. Like anyhow, can we leave the factory up to you? It's like no problem. <laughs> the defenses will be thin. At this point, all the tontadas will join Frowland. Well, that wasn't. That's not cut. Cu- <laughs> no, that's in help. You just want to do that voice. Is what's going on. I'm trying to do it a little different. Cub is down here. I don't know. Oh, okay. I see, I see. <laughs> and what you, Princess Manchere, and the others. Uh, and they all head off, and they will meet at the Royal Plateau. Uh, we head that's, to, a, that's a lot of Tone Tata talk. We head to Team Frankie again. Just Frankie. He's um, a one-man team. <laughs> yeah. It was like the piece together theme he just did there. Um. I'm oh, sorry, the piece of the tweet theme. Um, and Frankie's like, okay, here I am. <laughs> About to blow the factory down. I, I mean... Uh, Don't try to stop me. I, I mentioned the Toonami episode twice in this week. The second time is where it's the I feel especially super this week gag. Um, he's like the fourth wall guy, I feel like. You know, he's like, okay, here I am. Now I'm in the chapter and I'm going to blow <laughs> things up. Um <laughs> That's just that's just how that feels. Um, 
so he blows the he tries to blow the factory door down and then out of nowhere um it's not like a attack like that could even scratch the factory but singer pink feels like intervening anyway how could that not i like i have faith in frankie i think he could have if that hit but anyway uh steven uh so yeah he's um oh man what is is that a suplex what is what is he doing that is going over the back that is a german suplex german suplex all right um you also see the ground doing whatever his technique is it looks like watery right around yeah yeah it kind of looks like he's you know splashing up out of the uh the surface the way that he does um but yeah he uh he slams frankie back on his uh his shoulders and his head and he says i'm i'm back here to settle our score and uh frankie <laughs> and he ends up just shooting his laser in the complete opposite direction uh <laughs> typical frankie in a giant giant fireball uh and he is he is shocked he's like what the enemy was here after all i thought the coast was clear uh and kind of a, a cryptic response that's what a man does boy uh i guess i guess that's just in your pink being hard-boiled uh much to the delight of his floozies yeah where the hell are they <laughs> <laughs> no i feel like you know how they did uh, not get blown away by the laser it's you, okay i can you see know, their parachutes steve you know how they did like uh this episode of the simpsons is filmed in front of a live studio audience i feel like senior stern has his own live studio audience of his of just women that follow him <laughs> And so you just hear it in the background. It makes no sense because there is none. Um, Don't we all wish we had that? (laughs) I I do really like this page, though. Yeah, yeah. I like the um, Frankie's very um, expressive in his face muscles and uh, a lot of etching on his face. Uh, It looks cool. I really like it. We've discussed it, I think, throughout the arc, but we did not see Frankie a lot in Punk Hazard or in Fishman Island. So I am just enjoying every scene we do get to see with Frankie. Uh, It's always most of the time. Most of the time we saw Frankie, he was inside Chopper and Nami was inside of him. So it was not the usual. That is not what that sounds like. (laughs) Um, okay, keep going. <laughs> uh, so on the other side of the page, uh, we have the new Royal Plateau and, uh, uh, Dellinger is freaking out some more. Uh, Steve, do you want to do the honor? Eek. <laughs> he, he really says eek a lot. like, eek, <laughs> oh, yeah. gross. Eek, gross. What's going on? <laughs> Why the gladiators come, coming up here? It's a great eek. panel of Dellinger there. Just always, uh, he's like Stefan, the character. Uh, oh yeah, he just SNL. just always has his hands up by his face. I can't, I can't really imitate that without, yeah, <laughs> without yeah, people seeing really me it on, a... <laughs> on an audio podcast. <laughs> Maybe you should have been uh, doing and... the Stefan voice. Um, uh, I only know what it looks like. I don't know what he sounds like. Go, go on, Stephen. Sorry. Oh well, the, these are these are. Uh... His lines continued here. Oh, yeah, Steve. Down. Oh, he keeps going. He yeah. just won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... There. God damn it. You can't even do it with a straight face? Like, how can you? There's no there's, there's no way you could do this voice with just frowning. <laughs> <laughs> there should have been thousands of naval marines down there. Plus voice... Voice. <laughs> voice. Take, voice take Admiral two. Bastille. <laughs> Um, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Admiral Bastille. Uh, not to mention Admiral Fujitora. How'd they get through? Through. Yes. Um, and yeah, we, we have the the whole group of uh, gladiators. And I, I really love this panel. You can see like they are they're sort of climbing up a steeper side of, of Pika's, I guess, former mass and uh, they're like because of the way that the the land was reshaped. They're basically crawling along the sides of the buildings because it's all vertical, and they're like climbing up the road uh, up to to get to a, a better point. It's a really cool looking panel. Very uh, kind of Inception there. This, it works this... very well because you're following a direction. You are like yeah. following the direction of their movement. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's strong. It, it's strong very well because uh, he kept that. Um... Uh, perspective no no uh i'm just not good there's a word for it um this also makes me wonder 
when this is all said and done, and who knows when or how or if it will, uh, is this what Trisvos is going to look like? A giant headless guy in the middle of an <laughs> island? I hope so. That would be, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> but, I, it didn't occur to me until this moment because there are like buildings on it and stuff. It's like, oh, so they're just going to live sideways on top of a giant person <laughs> without a head. What if, what if you're like, oh, shit, my house is on the underside <laughs> of his armpit. Well, what am I going to do now? Oh, it stinks in here. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, oh yeah, where are you from? Oh, I live up on the upper thigh. Hell, my cousin lives there. I live on his twelfth ab. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have to have you have to have more of a six pack, considering like every single One Piece character is born with a six pack. Well, well, he does. You could even see two, four, six, eight at least. I mean, we don't even see all can of just, it. Can I just get that point across here? While I brought it up, every character has a six pack. At least, yeah. I can- like freaking Even the like fat ones. as kids, like Frankie and Zoro had six packs. I'm like, they're they're, 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 they're too young. <laughs> and shave those sideburns. You shouldn't have those yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, Steve. Even though you uh, spoke for half of that, yeah, half of even Steven's though I pretty much page. spoke for all of Steven's page uh, in that voice. Um, second step of the new royal plateau. Um, oh, so it, it's counting from the bottom. Okay, I would say okay. it's the reverse. Yeah, foolish us. I should have remembered that. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, I'm a doof. Uh, straw hat. Don't be straw a hat. schmuck. Straw. I like how I'm reading this combo. Straw hat has reached the first strip. Well, that, is that was that someone reporting that's, in? That's, he's, yeah. getting yeah. in the, he's getting punched in his face. Okay, while he's uh, reporting in. <laughs> It's just you know, punch him right on the mouth. No, I just thought this was just someone talking over it. Uh, but you know, uh, Luffy does a gum gum gattling. Very Gwah! classic looking As paddling. Gets, uh, yeah, it's really cool because it's uh, you know all the uh, the arms are coming in like on a curve, and you your eyes really go into the center of the page. Uh, focus on Luffy writing on the Moosey. It, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of gum gum gattling panels have looked like that, but for some reason, this one just really. Uh, uh, wow, I'm still forgetting my word, but like Oda's kind of on a roll with these pages on these layouts because yeah. everything's kind of you know at a focal point in some of these big panels. Um, it's really nice seeing it digitally because I assume with the crease it it would not have the same impact. Yeah, you're, here. G- you're gonna yeah. lose a lot of this. Um, it, it it looks really really fantastic. I like the layout of the page in general. It, it's a lot different looking. I think it's a different kind of action and. He's like way in the background of, and just the fact that it's kind of vertical movement, mm-hmm. uh, or horizontal, horizontal but, movement. Um, but yeah, they're completely useless against Luffy, and now they have the gladiators to deal with coming up from below. And uh, Cavendish this time saying Straw Hat without malicious intent. He's like Straw Straw Hat. I don't know. <laughs> it's like Straw Hat. <laughs> you slide dog. <laughs> <laughs> and. And then Baby Five looking through her knocks again. She's like, "There, look, Steve's favorite character." <laughs> Dal- Dallinger has uh, what, what his own questionation point. Like, mm. <laughs> <Is> that- mm-hmm. <laughs> what, what does the question questionation point sound like? It's like, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. I don't know. J- yeah. did, have I asked you, Stephen? What is Dellinger actually supposed to sound like, or what you um, think he's supposed to sound like? It's he, I, I think, he definitely has feminine speech. Yeah, like that's that's definitely a big part of it. Um, and so you know, it may be it may be us sort of extrapolating from that a little bit by you know casting him in in this way. But it is he's kind of a hard character to grasp just because we don't really know what the deal is. If, you know, if he's if he is literally just you know kind of playing up that that stereotype of uh, you know sort of effeminate. Uh, speech, or if there's something else going on, but <laughs> give yeah. it up, Dellinger. It's like <laughs> talk like talk, talk like yourself. All right, all right. This is my actual voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's fine that he has yeah. characters that speak like that. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm every time he, all, all of his little eeks are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think originally, I think you translated it as that. I think you kept it as Kia. Oh, didn't? Mm. Maybe I don't know. I I, I think it's kind of cool though having someone who speaks like that, but they're clearly super formidable. Um, I think Dellinger has some formidability to him. Um, everyone else seems to think so. I mean, he has some sort of, he is definitely one of the top schmucks there. Uh, anyway, mm. uh, do you have, you have more with this page? I'm, this I'm, I'm one of the top schmucks in the Don Quixote <laughs> family. Um, 
It's like top dog. But uh, the reason why everyone's getting up is because the Navy forces are being held down. And we see Fujitora, and he's like, it's like, I don't think I could convince you to step aside and let us pass. And on the and, next page... And we, we see a flaming pole. And uh, someone says, you shall not pass. Um, actually, that's basically what Sabo here says. We could call him Sabo, guys. Um, this is a really cool spread. You have uh, Sabo standing in front of the big name Marines that we've seen so far, including Maynard, uh, which is the one we all remembered immediately, I assume, uh, mm-hmm. Bastille, uh, and Fujitora, and some really big lanky guy in the background who's totally stealing the show here, if you ask me, and a guy with crazy hair to the left there. I don't know if you see. Cool looking little Marine people all over. And they're, they're no Marnie Marine, that's for sure. They're no Marnie. But I'm sure we'll think of a nickname before this chapter's over for some of them. Um, and Sabo is just standing in front of the Marines he's decimated already, which is no surprise. It doesn't really show too much formidability there. Uh, and he says, look, it depends. I can't let anyone pass who intends to do harm to the Straw Hat Pirates or those helping them. And um, Fujitora, I believe, is the one who asks, is it a revolutionary's job to support pirates? And Sabo's like, yeah, that's right. You know, oh, um. Yeah, that's about... I think he just says, yeah, that's right. As a revolutionary, I forbid you to pass. You shall not pass. Um, I will make this Lord of the Rings reference as clear as possible. Uh, And Sabo says, no, look, as his brother, I can't let you pass. And Fujitora says, oh, ho. And whose brother might you be? Um, Choppers. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's the big twist there. Sabo really establishing his place as uh, one of the newest cool characters in one piece mm-hmm. yeah because law has certainly and fell, I, <laughs> fell off a little bit well, don't forget that's people. not that's not underestimate people here ace was taken down back by an admiral maybe not this admiral yes yeah saba will die here. i don't think he will i'm not saying it but i mean obviously but if he is if this fight, tweet. do you think he might <laughs> i don't think he will i think sabo is in for the long haul if you ask me um yeah. but but it is an interesting... I think it'll show the difference between Sabo and Ace. I mean, we've already known Sabo used to be a little stronger, but he also has two years more under his belt than Ace, who was a very strong guy. Um, and he's also the number two of the revolutionaries, so we have to assume he is... And now he has this, su- this superpower, this uh, devil fruit power. you got to feel real bad for some of the other guys. Like, man, I've been with the Revolutionary Army for all these years. <laughs> some, some little kid. <laughs> Uh, he's like, what is he, 21? I, ch- I could check that. Is he that. the same age as Ace? Yeah, same age as Ace. Was. Same <laughs> age as... Yeah, I'll, I'll look this up. Um, all right, what, what did you guys think of the chapter, uh, Stephen? Um, I, I had fun going through it just now, um, but I have to say that... And, and you know, I'm maybe I'm being a little, a little, a little tough on Oda because... Um, you know, it was they, it came after a break, but I I thought this was kind of a dud of a chapter. Like the last page is really cool and it sets up a great confrontation, but I feel like almost all of this chapter was like either every, everything was so brief that it almost wasn't worth mentioning. Like, hey, Frankie and Senior Pink, they're still fighting, um, or stuff that you kind of knew was. It was kind of you know like the stuff like like Violet having to explain to King Riku. Like, okay, yeah, sure, King Riku doesn't know, know that the Straw Hats are the good guys, but we all know that, and it's it feels kind of, like, redundant a little bit to have mm-hmm. her, you know, waste all this time explaining it to him. Um, the thing with the key I thought was really weird. Like, I just felt like if if that was supposed to be, a like, a you know, a plot point that Oda could have done it in a, a little bit more elegant of a way or at least like pointed out not just have it literally be like oh there's no key and then all, all of a sudden hey guess what i found a key um <laughs> you know, hey, I, I know. found a key <laughs> um yeah. by the way he was 22 or he is 22 sabo okay. so close he's he, i mean all of us here are older than sabo right yeah. even steve steve's the young one and you're much older than sabo at this point right yeah yeah um steve Hmm. Uh, Stephen kind of brought the room down a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I think a reaction uh, me and Zach both shared, like, yeah, it was a good chapter. Um, 
was really expecting that flashback, though. Yeah, we <laughs> talked about it last yeah. week. We really were. Oda, Oda really left us hanging there. And, yeah, I, some of the things, yeah, kind of repeat themselves. Like, once again, like, oh, the world government turns a blind eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, someone else made this speech already. Yeah. Well, was well, like, but I didn't. <laughs> well, look, before flashbacks, a lot of the time we get a, what is everyone doing? And then we go to the flashback and then we get that another, what has been happening, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it's possible still, but I, I try I to know. focus on the things I like. Like, I think a lot of the uh, panel layouts and, you know, the page layouts uh, were pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. I think like, a lot of stuff was kind of just repetitive, but I think, you know, the... The Coliseum fighters and you know the Straw Hats have been making you know some progression, and we find out it's because of uh, you know Sabo holding back the Marines, which I guess you know Sabo really did need his uh, his cool moment right there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I actually did enjoy Senor Pink coming back because yeah, like Frankie kind of just ran away, and um, yeah, I want to see what the rest we didn't get closure, there. and it's cool because it did set up a fight. Uh, which you know we've talked about it a lot on the podcast that we really don't see too much of that one-on-one pairing. Anymore, We're getting that though. a couple. Now well, we have Zoro too. Now we have Zoro yeah. with Pika. I I have to admit that I was kind of thrilled to see that because I want to see Frankie have more one-on-one fights because uh, actually you know he's uh, he's been pretty lucky you know with Punk Hazard he did fight uh, Baby Five and Buffalo. Uh, he kicks this is a, ass, yeah. Yeah, and this is a one-on-one fight with a really weird guy. Pretty much, these guys are almost uh, on you know, par. They're, they're on par. They're very similar. You know, yeah. they were, you know, kind of like speedos. Um, they're, they're the freaks. Diaper and yeah, speedos. they're the freaks. Uh, so I think this is going to be a pretty. True. This is going to be a pretty entertaining fight between the two. So I, I did enjoy that. Uh, I do like Sabo's cool moment. You know, it is his cool, badass, look at me moment, but it was cool. It was badass. Um, amazing that he's gotten used to his powers this quickly. Um, but he's uh, clearly a very uh, strong and talented individ- individual, as we've seen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he's so wise. <laughs> Handsome, too. I, I, guess, I, guess, I guess I would say just... To be charitable, I would say this is a housekeeping episode. This is like you know, yeah, Oda is, yeah. is getting stuff in in arrangement uh, yeah. so that he can he can move forward. Uh, Which makes sense to do it now. I, I'm not that surprised that this is only because of what, what he's been what he's been doing, like personally. Yeah, what Oda's yeah. been going. I think through. I think what's more disappointing when you got to think about it, this is going to be an entire anime episode. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Okay, the anime doesn't often do a good job with this kind of thing, but I think there's room to play with here. Like, mm-hmm. uh, for example, with the Tontadas, I, I think you could do a lot of cool little things in the background. The B plot. Uh, the why B-plot. do the ton- Why do the Tontadas climb on top of people? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I mean. But I mean, there's like a lot of cool little things happening in the background that I think the anime could take advantage of, but they probably won't. Um, Anyway, uh, just just for my thoughts quickly, I'll go from the end to the beginning. Uh, I didn't really notice it because it was hidden hidden behind a dome, a doom, whatever we're calling it. But I really like I, I don't know the word for it either, Steve. I'm going to say perspective shot because you get this in the background, right behind the dome. You get the the old palace, and you see how huge it is, towering over the city. It's a really cool shot, I think, kind of looking up from behind Sabo. Um, and in general, Fujitora actually looking a little bit formidable there. Um, I, I I actually really do agree with both Stephen and Steve. When I first read this chapter, I thought the best part was the color spread um, and the cover page, which are both mm-hmm. great. Um, that's that's uh, that's still high regards. Um, but I didn't really love the chapter. I'm like, okay, it's house cleaning. That is, that's exactly what I thought it was. Um, uh, but I had a lot of fun going through it with you guys. I hope you yeah. guys enjoyed listening. Um, yeah, surprise, surprisingly, I had a lot of fun and not just because it's the silly voices. I try not, try not to do those there were too a lot much, of those but, this week, but. but God forbid when like Tellinger and the Tontadas are doing exposition, uh, I took advantage of that, I guess. Also, so. Tank is in the background a, a lot more than I realized. <laughs> Tank is like on the same vein as He's just uh, there. Hack over there. It's like, oh yeah, I forgot Hack is there too. But I'm, Hack, I'm, Hack actually, I'm, I'm a member of the Royal Guard. <laughs> Hack probably serves that, some that, more that's, importance. That's nice. Um, yeah, I I think the coolest part of this, and we we discussed it at length, were, were the color pages and the uh, cover of Shonen Jump was really cool. Um, 
and and I didn't notice the table of contents thing. So, you know, I, Oda, I, I'm I, first off, One Piece. I obviously love One Piece. So even a bad chapter of One Piece, I still love. Um, but he's also recovering from what I assume is a somewhat major surgery. So I could definitely cut some slack here. Um, and hopefully we're going to get into the flashback at some point. Um, any, any final thoughts? No. Okay. Why don't we get into the next segment since no one's answering me. Okay. Okay. Today's episode of the unofficial One Piece podcast is sponsored by Collecticon. Check them out for your Mega House One Piece uh, merchandise needs at collecticon.com slash One Piece. Uh, so, Steve, what, what are you looking forward to this week at Collecticon that we haven't gone through yet, if possible? <laughs> it's tough. I mean, everything's kind of been the same, but like, hey, there's there's no shame there because there's so many awesome POPs that they have uh, either in stock or coming out right no, now. No, Cavendish is sold out. What am I to do? Man, Cavendish, I guess, is pretty popular. They like the bishies. Kaku is sold out. Let's, let's run down everything you could have bought. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Law... Well, even, available for pre-order Goku. now. Mm-hmm. Available for pre-order, I'll go through quick. We have uh, Mihawk, Bartolomeo, uh, young, sad Robin that makes me cry immediately. But, but the picture's happy. Uh, Mamanosuke's house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> His uh, entire house. <laughs> Trafalgar Law, uh, Bellamy, and those are for pre-order in stock now. I'll just go through them quick. Luffy, Chopper, Zoro, uh, Vivi for some reason. Why? Uh, Luchi... And I think and I think that's it. Well, Zach, I think just people. I think the reason why everything sold out is because people found out that to collect the con, their prices are freaking awesome. They did. And you still and, have time to find that out. Yeah, if you're a big Mega House fan, you like collecting your POPs. Why aren't you using Collecticon? Their prices are great. They're much cheaper than buying at any other that any con you'd go to. I know it. I've been to cons. I know how pricey <laughs> these things get. Buy a Collecticon. You get a good deal. I don't think I could end it better than that, so why don't we get back into the podcast? Yeah. This is the Toonami recap for episode 259, Showdown Between Cooks, Sanji vs. Ramen Kempo. Uh, Let's start with trending for this week. Uh, One Piece uh, trended, that's good, at number four. Uh, Sanji trended at number five, deservedly so this week. And Sniper King also deservedly so at number six. Uh, And uh, let us go to the ratings. And in the ratings, Toonami uh, did pretty well uh, last week. One Piece at 130 ranked number one in its respective time slot among 18 to 24 and 18 to 34 in all targeted men. That is what is important. Uh, Keep that in mind going as we go through it. But it did pretty well. Uh, Got 856,000 viewers with a 0.6 household rating. Uh, Only dipping 10,000 from uh, Shippuden and doing better than Space Dandy at 1230. So that's really cool. Um, so that's 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 very good. Uh, One Piece also got 432,000 adults, 18 to 49. Again, in uh, 18 to 49 year olds, it did better than Naruto Shippuden and Space Dandy and did better than everything that came after it. Uh, that's a little more uh, normal, but uh, very good. That's very, very good, especially at that hour. Uh, so why don't we get into the episode, Steve? <clears throat> and we start... Uh, <clears throat> two uh, uh, two cars get uh, detached here, um, and we have a squeaky voice teen. Uh, <laughs> he sounds exactly like the the Simpsons squeaky voice teen. Comes in and apologizes for his insolence. Uh, oh, I remember this guy's voice. Yeah, he um, he's not so much a teen. He's like, well, I'm gonna be very calm and explain to you the situation. No, no, there was there was one guy who uh, his voice was cracking while he was. Uh, oh. We're not talking about the guy that was, like, running down everything to CP9? No, it was the guy. Okay. Uh, it, it gets calmer as, as he continues, but at, at first it sounded like that. <clears throat> they go through the whole situation. Robin's in car one, CP9's in car two, Nero's in car three, Wansi's in car four. Uh, Kaku puts two and two together, and and Bluno uh, is it's like, oh, we got to recapture Frankie. Um and Lucci's like, I'm evil, and I'm gonna do evil things, and that's basically that. He's not evil. He just, he's just. 
No, he gives like the most evil face. Just, um, yeah, he's just he he really loves his job. He yeah, he's, it's good to like your job, I guess. Um, maybe not in this situation uh, when your job involves killing people. Um, then we head to Wanzi. Um, and despite what I may think about characters here, this episode was really superbly animated throughout. Um, I, I don't remember the last time I've seen something so consistently nicely animated. Like, nothing like, wow, but it, it, it looked really cool. Lots of uh, shading. Um, it, it was it was cool. Uh, anyway, Wanzi uh, makes Super Noodle, shoots them out of his nose. You know, the normal Wanzi thing, Steve. Um, and uh, so Sanji takes him on while Frankie and uh, Sniper King head to the roof. Uh, we get the Sniper King song as he is on top of Frankie, and he has, he has a sticky idea um, involving not squid, but octopi. Um, and so then, uh, oh, then Wanzi and Sanji have a kick. Sanji kicks him 12 times, and, you know, Wanzi is like, oh, is that what you just did? And he asks, are you super strong or something? And Sanji responds, maybe you're just super weak. And then he <laughs> responds, even my old man wouldn't say that. Wanzi has a past. I can just imagine Wanzi's dad. Exactly the same way with a mustache. <laughs> he would look exactly the same. <laughs> Wanzi, when you're going to grow up, you're going to be... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be mad, 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 mad at you. Um, <laughs> so things get weirder. He has a combat uniform made out of... Noodles, of course. Um, and Sanji's just pissed at how he's using food. He's like, I'm going to make you eat every last one of those noodles. Um, which is a nice callback to Sanji's uh, hating hating wasting food. Um, back from commercial break, our favorite character, Nero, uh, is sitting on top of the... It's uh, Weasel. <laughs> sitting on top of the uh, car. Um, and he explains he's the new recruit for CP9. Uh, and then Frankie uses the, what's that behind you? And he falls for it. And Frankie's line after that is, they'll call me the king of Water 7's underworld for nothing. All you did was say, look behind you. <laughs> oh, man. what a... man, He is such a gang leader. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. It makes no sense. Uh, Luffy sits on top of the rocket man because that's what he does. Everyone's like, where is he? There's a whole discussion there that is completely a waste of time. Uh Wanzi uses uh, ramen kempo, which Sanji, in like a very fourth Wallace joke, calls the lamest power up ever. Um, and Sanji gets stuck though while he's kicking and punching, and he gets his eye beaten up. Uh, no, it's not. He gets himself beaten up. I was ruining the joke I was getting to, which is that Sanji's hair stands on end to stop the other eye from being shown, which is a funny little gag. Um, and then we have Wanzi like glowing, coming down, beating up Sanji. Um, and then when Sanji realizes, oh, he has an opening for an attack, the uh, his head, uh, you can't forget he shoots that out of his nose uh, noodles, so can't get out of that. Um, and then Sanji realizes, wait, I'm a chef. I could use my hands and knives. Uh, so he's going to demonstrate how to cook. So it's just like Benny Hanna, Steve. It's going to be <laughs> just like it. He's going to make like the Benny onion Han. volcano. He's going to make that beating heart rice thing. Sorry to spoil people. We haven't been to Benny Hanna. Um, and then we go back to Nero, who uh, Frankie survives Nero's Tempest Kick, uses Frankie Fire. They both are confused because they were both able to dodge it uh, using various things. Um Sniper. Meanwhile, Sni Sniper King uses some Octo shoes to see Robin. The Sniper <laughs> King music starts up and then just gets cut off, which I think is. This was yeah. This was like when Toy would just start really abusing the <laughs> the Sniper King song. I, I think it. I think that was probably the best use of it in the episode. It, it was used like three times in the episode, I think. But that that was the best one because it's just like it's just the cut off. I thought was a very humorous. Uh, move uh thoughts i really enjoy these fights i really like sanji and wanze um it's a very different fight for sanji um and you'll find out more why a little bit later but it's uh it's interesting he hasn't really fought too many kooky characters um and also fr just seeing frankie get the fight more I, I like frankie's rooftop battle with nero frankie and sanji both get to well frank not frankie sanji gets to act very cool and 
collected and calm next to the weirdest thing on the face of the earth. Uh, so I, I think that's pretty cool. And uh, I think everyone shines in this of, of the three that are on the train. Um, so that's cool. The CP9 scene was relatively useless, um, but, but the rest of it was a lot of fun. Um, all right. Want to get into the next segment, Steve? Yeah, let's do it. This is the anime recap for episode 650, Luffy and the Gladiator of Fate, Rebecca. Um, so, yeah, last time we found out Luffy uh, made Shin Zhao back into a, a conehead, and uh, we <laughs> returned to the Cordida Coliseum, um, where uh, Giatz goes through block A, we had Burgess. What do I realize? Yeah. Ever made a coneheads joke with Don Shin Zhao? We didn't? We did not. Well, that's a so anyway, go, uh, moving on. <laughs> uh, the Block A winner, uh, Burgess from the Blackbeard Pirates. Block B winner, Bartolomeo from Barto Club. Which after after all of this, I realized it's probably just Luffy's fan club. It's just called. Do, the Barto. do you remember there was another member? There was actually a member of the Barto Club in the Coliseum. Oh yeah, the other guy who kicks uh, Maynard's ass. Right? No, Maynard kicks. Oh, Maynard his ass. kicks his so ass. Bartolomeo right? kicked it. We have not. He has not mentioned himself. Like now that I think Bartolomeo has come face to face with Luffy, and now that we know he's a big Luffy fan, I don't think he gives a shit about that guy. It's like, hey man, how come you didn't help me out after he beat me up? I'm like, let's try Luffy's here, man. Come on, man. be cool. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't do this to me. Right? Don't embarrass me in front of Luffy. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, and Lucy, of course, won uh, Block C. Uh, so now it's time for Block D, but they have to fix the ring. And everyone's like, hurry up and get a new ring, you assholes. It's been, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. I understand why that would take time. Uh, we also, uh, then we head toward, I don't know, the hallway, uh, where Cavendish and Luffy are fighting. Uh, and here comes Bartolomeo. What is this going to be about? Uh, and the two thugs decide to... And the two thugs are walking by him and talking some smack. And Bartolomeo overhears it and decides to smash one of them against the wall for speaking bad, ill of Luffy. Uh, which is exactly what we were just talking about. Uh, and he grabs him by the tongue to explain his adoration for him. Um, I, this was probably my favorite part of the episode. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to go through it? Yeah, apparently... Uh... Uh, Bartolomeo pretty much saw the rise of Luffy from the beginning in Logtown. He was there. Um, saw Luffy uh, survive. And it was reanimated. Oh, yeah. At this point now, um, <laughs> no, since uh, time skip, you're never going to see Toy use old footage. That's a good thing. From uh, the, uh, was it four by, uh, is it four by three yeah. ratio? Yeah. Never going to see that again, um, Did which is good. Did someone say that? <laughs> No, but they've never used it again since. Um, I think towards the end when they were flashing back to everything, I think because you know, if you watch like those season five episodes, yeah. it's um, and they splice in that old animation, it just looks so bad and looks so lazy. I never thought the animation One Piece aged that much until I was watching those on DVD. I'm like, oh, oh god, <laughs> it's pretty terrible. But. Um... Uh, yeah, so then ever since then, he was inspired, and he followed uh, the Straw Hats Adventures in Alabasta and his lobby and Impel Down, and he had his, you know, had hung their posters up on the wall. And, and it's, it, it kind it, of the, we see the lightning scene again, and it really, like, makes me think again, how did Luffy get out of that situation? Was that Dragon doing the, the lightning there? Because mm -hmm. um, that, that is just too coincidental. I would like to think it is coincidental. But we know it's not. <laughs> I don't, I don't think Dragon was like, and eh, no. <laughs> I mean, if I anyone, it would make, I mean, he has the motivations, his son, let's save his life there. Um, who knows? Who knows? Um, anyway, meanwhile, Bartolomeo, uh, yeah, as you said, collected news stories. And he's like, find me more news stories. And he hangs up the wanted posters and, you know. Uh, and he's like, I was just some poor little gang leader who had 150 towns under my belt. <laughs> just a simple man. Um, in the manga, he cuts the guy's tongue off, but yeah, it doesn't. Happen I, I, I was, I think I was watching this episode waiting. I'm like, there's no way he's cutting his tongue off, yeah. there's no way he's cutting his tongue off, but he didn't. And then he just like threw him aside, just beat him up a little bit. That was probably my favorite part of this scene is that he's acting like, yeah, I was just like, a, I'm a modest guy, and then he just cuts the guy's tongue off. Um, 
I thought that was a great juxtaposition in the manga. Um, anyway, uh, Luffy, uh, meanwhile, is holding Cavendish's sword back. He's like, I'm tired. Don't make me do this. I haven't eaten. <laughs> um, and Bertolomeo is watching a giddy awe. He can't even yell at Cavendish to stop because he's in just <laughs> such awe of him. Um, and meanwhile, here comes Chin Zhao, Sai, and Boo. Chin Zhao is so thankful for what Luffy did to bring his head back to uh, its conehead state that he bows and cracks the floor in two. Uh, and Luffy runs away as this is all going on. Uh, so they're all running after Luffy down the hallway. Chin Zhao's like, I want you to join the Hapo army. And Cavendish is like, I'll kill you. And Bartolomeo is like, I want to be you. Um, <laughs> And uh, then Rebecca comes along and we go to a commercial break after they hear something. What could it be? Steve, what was it? It was the, uh, it was the gathering of strange laughs. <laughs> uh, freaking Blackbeard is back. Kinda. <laughs> uh, uh, Jesus Burgess is talking to uh, his captain on uh, the transponder snail. First, it's, uh, I think uh, it's, the conversation started from what we hear. Uh, Blackbeard says like something like, oh, yeah, and then Sh- you know, Shiryu is like no different. And, um, and Burgess said something. I forgot what it was in the manga. I think there was an additional yeah. line. I think. And Burgess said something uh, like, oh, yeah, I don't trust Aokiji. I'm like, well, what's Aokiji have to do with this? Yeah. And then he's like, oh, ho- hold on. I-, I have someone here that wants to talk to you. Here, here. Talk, say hi. Say hi. You know, he's, when he turns around, the creepy ass transponders down. And Blackbeard's like, ooh. <laughs> and he says, I can't wait because it'll be like having Ace back in my group if Jesus has uh, the uh, the flame fruit. It's like it's like with calling Marty McFly chicken is you don't talk about Ace. Well, I think he's purposely <laughs> doing it. Of course. Yeah. Um, I also then, realize how huge Burgess is when yeah. he stands. Oh, he up got a lot buffer. He yeah. has a lot more definition now. Yeah. I realized. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Blackbeard cracks that joke, and Luffy's like, "I don't have time for this right now." And Blackbeard and uh, Burgess proceed to just do both of their laughs at the same time. <laughs> so we have Big Burgess with this wee ha ha laugh. You a, have a ridiculous laugh. Yeah, tiny little snail version of Blackbeard going zay ha ha ha, and just that image is funny right there and then yeah. they just, they leave and he's like clearly perturbed as he's running away and then he's like oh free samples and he goes <laughs> after that and rebecca buys him some and luffy is shocked that she would do such a thing and thankful as all hell um anyway they go to the gladiators quarters and she takes her helmet off in this very long scene of her taking her helmet off <laughs> um and she explains when he offers some food, he's just like, I don't get hungry anymore. So clearly something tragic in her past or something. And the best callback is Luffy saying, are you a samurai? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then some bandaged guy tries to take Luffy and tells Rebecca to, you know, it's mummies. The sword. It's they obviously probably mummies. Wanna, they probably want to eat his brain. Clearly. Uh, Rebecca goes after him, but Luffy, I love this scene too. Uh, Luffy bites the guy, and while he still has the bento, the snack box in his hand, uh, kind of kicks their ass and then pins down Rebecca while he's still eating. Uh, he's like, I, I'm not going to do I, I like that long pause of, yeah. of just pinning her down, and you can tell they're just saving on animation because they don't have to move anything, <laughs> and then just... <sighs> <laughs> just goes back to eating i knew it was coming and uh it was it, it was great i love it uh then he's like uh luffy's like i'm not gonna do anything and rebecca's like i tried to kill you he's like you bought me food and also yeah, I'm no but no he says a great line yeah but i'm alive yeah but i'm so. alive yeah. um so we find out that there are gladiators who spoke out against do flamingo they're essentially prisoners uh, before Do Flamingo became king, uh, these were not fights to the death, we learned, so things are becoming a little darker. Uh, and then the animation gets really good for some reason. Uh, yeah, like, and then uh, for no reason. change in quality, like um, like that show. Mary special. Everything is just glossy. Uh, and Rebecca declares that her intentions is that she wants to protect Mr. Soldier. Um, so I assume we're going to find out a little more about see that. see a little flashback of uh, her as a little kid, and Soldier says, like, oh, I'll always be there to protect you. Um, I'm excited to get into what we're about to get into here. Um, so yeah, thoughts on the episode. Um, I actually really liked this episode all the way through. It was yeah. very enjoyable. Uh, the Bartolomeo stuff is classic. Um, Rebecca get more screen time. 
you know, especially with Luffy and a little more development is great because we find out that she's a, a prisoner gladiator. She's forced to fight. Um, get some Blackbeard. We get to hear that awesome Blackbeard voice and laugh. Um, the the animation was was very good at the end. I think it's a little too. I hate good. the inconsistencies. Yeah, it's it, it it's clearly obvious that it's a different animator. Mm-hmm. I just think like. One Piece isn't like you don't have to draw every single highlight on their hair. I just don't think One Piece is that style. It's not it doesn't look so realistic, so I don't think you have to do that. She just got so glossy and with Rebecca it kind of feels weird because she's practically naked, so there's just gloss all over her skin. <laughs> uh for those curious, this comes from Crossword at uh, AP. Today uh today's episode was uh directed by Masahiro Hosoda and uh the animation director was Masahiro Shimanuki Shimanuki. Okay, I'm just going to get made fun of by Greg if Shima, I do this. Shima, Shimanuki. <laughs> Although right. Steve, you've also had your share of mispronunciations if I recall, maybe not on air. Um, <laughs> Name one. I'm not gonna say it out loud. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. Now you remember. And now I do. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, why don't we get to the next segment, Steve? Sure. <laughs> This is the Piece Together segment where we take your questions, comments, and theories, and then try and answer them using a series of calculated analyses taken from scientific databases from around the world. Uh, Why don't we start with the chef. Um, He asks, so now that we know that Corazon is both Doflamingo's brother and Law's mentor, do you really think uh, he will be the first celestial dragon that is not hilariously evil? Or do you think Oda could make him a bastard that isn't really a noble? It's a good question. Hmm. Yeah. He could uh, also be a brother in the way that, like, Sabo and Ace or Luffy's brother. I mean, we don't really Yeah, know. That, that could be too, right? There's, again, there's lots of... Uh, Lots of uncertainty about the actual particulars of of Doflamingo's past until we actually see this uh, long-awaited flashback. Steve or uh, Stephen? Oh, sorry, it's Stephen. You just said it. Steve. Any <laughs> thoughts? You guys have the same name, okay? It's very confusing to people, I assume. Steve, do you know, or do you have uh, thoughts? You weren't listening, said. were you? Um, <laughs> Let's just go to the next question then. Uh, the old man village asks, uh, "Do you think Senor Pink Kia uh, underestimated Frankie's radical beam uh, when he? That's how it's written out. Uh, when he tried to blow up the factory, or will Frankie have to pull out something new slash get help after he beats Senor Pink? Maybe that's where Kiros is headed. It's kind of that's going yeah, through my mind. Maybe I don't know the." I, it's still like I don't under quite understand how it is that like the uh, sea prism stone is just like a magical stops everything kind of material um, or, you know, especially because it's not like Frankie is using powers like he, that's that's an actual laser beam that he has. Uh, so I don't yeah, I don't know if it's a case of like mistaken uh, assumptions on their part or if it is tr- true that, you know, Frankie's stuff won't work and. Uh, you know, it's just going to be it's going to be a harder fight than we're expecting or there will have to be some other means of, of bringing down the factory. But um, I mean, now that they're squared off, basically, I'm, I'm sure it's, you know, we're, we're in for a classic one on one fight between those two guys. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I hope I'm, I'm excited. As Steve said earlier, that that would be exciting. Um, do do be Ono. Says two questions again. Sorry, guys. Uh, first one, in relation to the question we got two weeks ago about covering animators on One Piece, you may remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, since giving them a segment of their own is too difficult for an audio podcast, can you guys at least name drop the animation and episode directors for the episodes in your anime recaps so we mm-hmm. can know who is responsible for the episode? Um, sure. Uh, is that information out there? That information it must be right. Yeah, I think again. I think uh, Murad uh, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I don't remember his Twitter handle, but you could search him as M U R A D. Uh, he knows everything about the episode before he starts watching. He's like, oh, "This is a scene by this one." Um, I, I, the, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know who here could correct me. I'm sure someone listening, but I think the director has a more kind of tenuous 
uh, hold over the episode than they used to. Like it used to be, uh, I think it was Nico Itate. I don't know how to pronounce anyone's name in Japanese, so forgive me. <clears throat> I usually like you, you could tell his episode because it had a very different style. It had that movie nine style. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't think we get as consistent animation anymore. Uh, this week's episode's a good example. You got that really cool-looking scene at the end for some reason. I don't really understand why. Uh, last week, too. So you have some very nice-looking key animation, I believe it's called. Um, but the regular animation is, you know, not unbelievable. Um, well, wait, wait. Hang on. Yeah, and someone oh, yeah. actually No, I, I, just heard, I just heard someone listening, and they just said, You're wrong! Oh, okay. In the distance, so... Sorry, um, sorry, Zach. That might be wrong. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, I'll be honest. We And, I mean, I don't think that's definitely something we're missing, and we, we've talked about this as, as an expert at, at the anime. Um, I, and we'd love to have Murad on, but uh, I think he said before that, I don't know, he's busy or he doesn't want to. Um, so maybe in the future we'll have someone on. Uh, or we could have, like, an anime recap guy who comes on. Uh, since we're usually a little short for that anyway, since not all of us uh, watch the anime. Um, good question, though. Uh, second, what age range would you think would be appropriate to uh, show a child One Piece? Or mm. to uh, give him a book? Yeah, that's that's a tricky question because obviously it de- you know, depends on what the uh, – if you're the parent, you know, what you're comfortable showing your kid or if you're not the parent, you know, what what they would say uh, if they found out what the kid was reading. But, I mean, I would I would guess probably, you know, if, if the kid's like 10 or 11, then that's totally fine in my, in my opinion. I mean, it's one of those things. It's like there there is – violence in there uh there are occasionally risque jokes but uh, i don't think you'd you get know, most the, of them if you were a kid like I yeah remember being a kid you don't really get those jokes like disney movies have a ton of those right and you but really it's realize. it's not really it's not a subversive series like you know the at the core of it of the story is is very you know uplifting and that's one of the reasons why um you know it is is so popular in Japan and is, you know, successful even from, you know, some of the uh, uh, educators that we interviewed that were saying, you know, oh, yeah, I think it's a great story to show kids because there's a lot of good lessons to be taught um, if as long as you're OK with them seeing, you know, people get bloody and stuff. Yeah, no, I agree. And then boobs. There's also those. But I mean, those close, exist in real life, boobs. too. I mean, kids go to beaches. Um I, until until it like the thing is eleven or twelve is when that stuff would start hitting you anyway. I was like, whoa, look at that! Um, <laughs> hey, look at that! <laughs> uh, let's go to the next one. Track Tracker OC says if the Straw Hats beat uh, when Luffy beats Do Flamingo, uh, will Fujitora try to arrest him and the Do Flamingo and Don, sorry Don Quixote family or chase after the Straw Hats? I guess which group do you think? I think Fujitoris is looking to uh, put an end to the chaos. I think once Doflamingo is taken out, the chaos is over. Yeah, so, I agree. Uh, uh, and such and an Fuji, interesting you guys forget that Fujitoro did say that he wanted to, you know, he wanted to put an end to the warlords, and he uh, yeah. he he's he's not an idiot. He knows what Doflamingo is up to. He's just yeah. he's going after the Straw Hats just out of a necessity to. Uh, spare any more uh civilians from getting uh hurt so yeah uh zeta 42 asks probably the question that's been on my mind the most but i keep forgetting to bring up on, on the show uh what do you think bellamy and burgess are up to hanging out <laughs> <laughs> uh it's funny because Bur- yeah because burgess was in this week's episode and i was thinking like well, what's yeah. he gonna like i feel like he's gonna yeah. do something else's arc not he's, just go back to yeah. blackbeard and be like well i tried <laughs> All this crazy shit happened, and I just hid until it passed, yeah. and then I left. So, so it breezed over, and then I just you know got on the boat and came here. Yeah, there's there's uh, got to be he's up to something here. Hopefully, right? yeah, hopefully Burgess has some sort of fallback plan. Uh, Bellamy, I think, I think Bellamy is on his way to uh, the palace. To be honest, to be like, mm-hmm. why, Doflamingo? Don't you love me? And uh, Doflamingo's gonna be like, nope, and like shoot him or something. <laughs> Um, 
All right, so, uh, Steve, I think it's that time in the show where we go to... No, Steve, you could get it. Peace the tweet. Yeah. Eh. Eh. It's like a C. I would Uh, give that something something like that. And you're lucky I'm here. (laughs) Ed is yelling at the iPod that he doesn't have. Because you know what? Ed has no one no one else around to care. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing, Steve? Um, Bone Storm asks <laughs> Ask, buy, buy me Bone Storm or go to hell. Uh, <laughs> do, do you think Usopp or someone else will utilize sea stone projectiles to fight devil fruit users? Very good question. That would be interesting. I'd love to see mm-hmm. that. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's cool. I could see that being like a sort of end of the series, like one of his last power up type things, maybe. I, I think it's it's too convenient of a of an idea yeah. for him to to just throw it into the middle of the story, but yeah, it would be cool. It's pretty much it's it's kryptonite right there. <laughs> right, right. It's like as soon as you introduce that, then it's like, well, why doesn't he stop just shoot his thing, you know, in every yeah. single fight? It's, that's, that's uh, a good point. That's a good. I'm point. kind of hoping that Sea Stone is kind of at least it's a challenge to uh, to sculpt into something. It's not yeah. so easy. Yeah, yeah. I, but then well, again, there's so many Sea Stone. They're all in handcuffs. handcuffs so, <laughs> and there's a building made of it. So, um, all right, we'll go to the next question. Uh, Stacy asks, "What are your family friends' attitudes toward One Piece? Do they support the series or give you a what the fuck are you talking about?" Look, she said WTF, but you know. Mm-hmm. I guess the, Stephen the, is the one who does it professionally. Well, I feel yeah, like yeah, I do it professionally. I, I have an easy out because mm-hmm. I can just say, you know, oh yeah, I do this professionally and I get paid to do it. And so this is the thing that I work on. And then if I say like, oh yeah, and it's like the you know it sold three hundred million copies in Japan, then this is going to become like, oh, well, that's weird. What do you have to do with, you know, why you just read comics all day? Then it's like, oh, wow, that's a big deal sort of thing. So it's kind of a cop out. But uh, that's that's my usual response is that I, I just get the compliments for being a working man. Steve? Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of my parents, like, I don't think they even know what One Piece is. Uh, I don't even think they know what I podcast about. <laughs> they just know I do it. Um so I don't know. My parents really aren't, you know, geeky. So everything kind of just looks the same to them. I still remember this time when I was watching DBZ and my dad said, you know, it all looks the same. That looks just like Pokemon. And then that's when like some sort of Freudian thing happened. I wanted to kill my dad <laughs> <laughs> for saying that. Yeah. Um, but uh, my friends, I mean, you know, I thought it was the Pokemons. So, you know, some of my friends have gotten into One Piece, you know, other friends. I think when I was a lot younger, kind of like, I, I don't see it. I just don't see it in One Piece. It's, it's not that cool. But, you know, most of those friends, their taste kind of just their taste was more into just action now, story never. <laughs> so um, I don't know. No one has ever really given me like a, uh-uh. you know, look, it's because being geeky these days is pretty damn cool. Just everyone's just into some, you know, not everyone's into the same things. People are into different stuff. So I don't think I've ever really been looked at strangely. Um, for, for me, I'm probably the most outside of the world. Cause Steve, you're kind of still like you have yeah. all your art friends and, and they're all into a lot of them are into anime. Um, it depends what I'm talking about. If I say I have a podcast, it actually has been pretty overwhelmingly positive. It's like, whoa, really? I love podcasts. And then they say, what is it about? And I'm like, uh, Japanese animation series? Of some sort? Um, and they're like, oh, okay. Um, no, no one knows what the hell. I'm, I don't really go into detail because I'm, why even go down that rabbit hole? And they're not going to be interested. A lot of them are probably not going to be interested. Some know what it is. Um, there are friends of friends who have heard of the show or heard of the series, the show being the podcast or the series. Um, so that's always really cool when that happens. But mm-hmm. my family and friends do not know what the hell I do or why I do it. So that's an easy answer there. Um, yeah. That's that's what conventions are for, you know, to actually yeah. be around people that know, that understand what you would be talking about. Well, that's mm-hmm. why I started the podcast, because who, who else am I going to talk about? It's a good outlet to be like, can you believe what happened on this chapter? I can't believe yeah. it. Um, and yeah, not just like for I, us, but for the people listening, too. 
like I must say before before I was on the podcast, I didn't really talk about One Piece with anybody. I didn't have any friends that were really into One Piece. Oh, I bugged the hell out of my friends prior to the podcast. Now I don't. I'm like, you could like whatever you want. But like most of my friends in college, I had one who would get drunk and run down the street and yell Yosh uh, after <laughs> he watched enough One Piece. You could probably tell around what year this was. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was interesting. Um, and my other friend, Victor, who we had on the podcast a long time ago, we got him. We got him watching the entire series. I think we got him through it in like a few weeks or something, which is a feat. Um, even back then. Even back then. Oh, God, it was still a feat. It was still what, 500, four, no, not 500 episodes, like 300-something episodes, um, which is still a lot of episodes. Um, like half of what it is now, but you get it. Um, next question uh, comes from Ryan. If you could turn any One Piece character into a toy, who and what would they be? For example, he'd make Luchi Hobbs from Calvin and Hobbs, which is a hilarious image if you think about it. It'd be funny because Luchi is like the biggest killjoy. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hobbs is. Like, okay, we're going to be astronauts. Like, what's the point? Outer space, <laughs> there's nothing to see. There is there is no justice out there. <laughs> Um, <laughs> any thoughts on? Oh, wait, what do you one? suggest we do, Lucy? I think we should go apprehend all those criminals. Why does Calvin sound like that? I don't know. He's got to sound like a little kid. <laughs> Why does he have like a weird lisp thing? Anyway, like a Billy Quick boy voice. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think? Any? Um, I like that one a lot. I think that's a funny uh, answer. Yeah. First one that comes to my mind: uh, Dellinger as like a Ken doll. <laughs> Uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, what, what do you call it when you can't tell what gender something is? is there's a word, not asexual, but androgynous. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Androgynous. Ambiguous. That's the word I was looking for. No, he's more androgynous than ambiguous. You really can't tell. Uh, so he's androgynous Ken. You know, like that's. Funny. <laughs> I'm trying to think of. I'm just trying. To, there's so many characters I can make great toys, but yeah. Just gotta, um. Well, the, the hard thing too is that. Like the the initial impulse is like, oh, this would make a good figure, but like they're all figures, you know, because there's just That's a million true. One Piece figures out there. They're already there. <laughs> That's yeah. a good point. And and I think like Frankie, like you know, post times Frankie is kind of a cop out too because he's just a real life robot, you know, robot toy. Yeah. And Gundam, just throw him in there. He's, yeah, um, he's, yeah. he's pretty much a Buzz Lightyear with all his yeah. bells. And oh, muscles, you're just. You know? I like Frankie in the Sergeant Frog world. Um, just gonna put that out there. Um, I could I could get down with like um, you remember the old Stretch Armstrong dolls, but like an oars version of that, where like you pull and then when it breaks open, it just pulls his arm off because he's a zombie. <laughs> okay, I really like that. Um, next uh, one, yeah, yeah, go ahead, one more. I don't know, I'm just I, I I feel like I should name more than just one. No, you're, um, we're good. We got a lot of questions left. We're, so we're fine. We're fine. I'm gonna be the killjoy who rushes this along. Um, Someone's got to do it. Uh, Eric uh, Morales asked, did Frankie have amnesia or something that he forgot Senor Pink was an enemy? I think it's it's more that he just forgot he was there. Um, yeah, or he just assumed that he wasn't there right. anymore. Yeah. Uh, Matthew says, uh, I know you get these questions a lot, but do you think Bartolomeo has a chance of joining the crew? He's not joining the crew. Yeah, I no. agree with that. Not a chance. They would, they he would will be. follow them around in a really stalkery fashion. Luffy will, yeah. Luffy will give him a couple autographs. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a glossy eight yeah. by nine or maybe he'll, you know maybe he'll get a job somewhere you know that he'll really enjoy, um, get some perks. But no, it's about no. He will Let, letting letting him join the crew would be like as bad of an idea as letting Lola marry one of the guys on the crew. <laughs> Uh, just like it. I thought that was a great idea. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, it, it, on the topic of that, okay. Uh, the best denial to that proposal was Frankie. What did he? I don't even remember. He's like, that. "Sorry, I'm too super for you," or something oh, like that. Or I'm too super good. to get married. It was the funny, and he said it with like a straight face. And Loa just took it like a champ. Loa was like, "All right, moving on." Uh, <laughs> She's got a rejected five times. That's she, a great. It's a great moment. That is a great line. Uh, I'm excited to watch Thriller Bark again. Uh, this uh, yeah, me too. Me too. Because I really have not looked at it since I originally read it. Six years. It. It's been six years. Yeah, I mean, it was before we started the podcast. Um, oh, right. Well, considering we had our fifth anniversary. Oh my god. <laughs> what? 
They, I was just, yeah, I was just watching uh, Thriller Bark like a year before I was on the podcast. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, Matthew, we did already. So, Joshua, if Oda were to ask you uh, to write in a Simpsons or Venture Brothers reference, uh, what would it be and why? That's a tough question. I mean, uh, Stephen, you've actually done that with a South Park reference at this point mm-hmm. and at several kind others. Of, yeah. I think just uh, any t- anytime we've made a Simpsons reference or Venture Brothers reference during a manga recap, just throw that in. But um, yeah. I do have one because I, I feel like this one Venture Brothers line just follows me in terms of the um, anime industry. And that's I want someone to be firing a rifle and be out of ammunition and just oh. say, I'm all out of gun food. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I'm your enemy. It's what I do. It's my thing. I'm your enemy. <laughs> uh, man, like, there's so many good lines. It's just, it's it's like, oh, I know the what I want, you know. And I don't know, uh, Stephen. I well, first of all, I would say that I don't like. It's not like I see a line and I'm like, oh, oh this this isn't funny enough. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make I'm gonna throw in a little joke that everyone would recognize. You know, it's always it's something where like the the text is basically already there and i'm just like oh that's funny that's kind of like that that other line uh and then you know there's kind of a confluence of of things there it's always based on what the the actual line is in japanese um yeah, like the one i was but, referring to is what 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 which you could literally yeah. just have said it fits caesar perfectly but it, it's funny that yeah because uh, he, he said something like na 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 you know it's basically the same thing yeah, yeah. Uh, and you got you just have to read that in sheila uh, profoski's voice. right <laughs> what 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 uh, that's that was just asking for it that one that was great though i that was that oh, really you, made oh, me you've happy. done a ton of uh south park uh I think you've done a few more South Park yeah. ones. I remember when we didn't get to talk about your Chapter Zero translation. Oh, yeah. We wound up not doing it, but... Um, we could still do that in the future. Uh, Garp Sengoku. said to Sengoku, oh, come, or, oh, relax, guy. <laughs> oh, well, I was I reading know. that, and I was like, Bleh! Yeah, right there, right there. I think that I think that's more of a coincidence. Oh, come I, that on. Was, Don't that was do that. No, that was <laughs> what, what? <laughs> He's, he's not his buddy guy. There's no, no way uh, he is. Uh. Last piece. I look. I could go on about how much I love the Canadians. Yeah. Um, piece. Piece. The last piece. Of the tweet, and then we got some emails. Um, Ash says, "Seeing the flames from each end of the uh, pipe. I believe he means Sabo's pipe. Uh, do you do you think Sabo has learned how to focus the uh, fruit's power through objects he holds, or is it the heat traveling through his hand causing the pipe to heat up? That's a really interesting question. Mm. It's the second, though, right? I, I kind of like the second as, as the possibility, and that makes the pipe a much more interesting weapon because it was not that interesting. It's weird that he still had that, I thought. Um, I like but, that. But I think someone asked uh, an SPS question about uh, Aokiji before about his ice, like, oh, does you know, does the ice just appear out of nowhere? Is it a part of him? And I think Oda did say that all the ice that Aokiji makes is a part of him. Yeah, I don't, I don't know for sure, like what to to guess about the actual properties of that. But I did think I did get the like the mental image when I saw Sabo with his pipe, and specifically like the flames looking out of the ends of the pipe. That it was like a it was like a gas line, you know, where like the flame gets lit, and there's just like a little a little candle flame of light just sticking out of the end of the pipe. That's kind of what it looked like to me, which is kind of cool. I, I like the idea of using fire in more than the ways than that Ace was. I mean, the whole thing with devil fruits is how creative can you get with it? Um, and Luffy's gotten very creative recently. Um, and I, and I'm looking forward to seeing, I think fire could do a lot more than what, uh, Ace did with it at the time when we saw Ace, we're like, "Whoa, he's so creative! He's destroying a million boats at the same time." But uh, I think now there's a lot of potential. Uh, let's get through some emails here. Um, correct uh, this person if he's wrong at any point, because I don't know. Uh, Oliver says he has a theory. Um, since Bellamy and Law both have strong connections to Doflamingo and both originally came from the North Blue, I think it's possible their histories may be linked. For example, Bellamy and Law lived on the same island in the North Blue. Again, correct this person if they're wrong, I don't know. Uh, maybe even knew each other personally. The incident um, 
where Doflamingo killed Corazon occurred and Doflamingo manipulated events to make it seem like he was... The, okay, so he's just predicting he's... A, yeah, these, these are just conjectures. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't get that right away. Uh, it seemed uh, he was the hero, hence why Bellamy swore a loyalty to him. However, Law later learns the truth and now hates Doflamingo. I guess and Bellamy didn't. That's an interesting idea. Uh, and th- then he's saying... Things will go on from there. Bellamy will confront Law. But I don't see Bellamy being that much of a key to things. Um, I, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. What do you guys think? No, I think Bellamy's kind of just going to be fodder. He's going he's to come in way. It's like, hey, Doflamingo, um, people said that you wanted me dead, but that's not true, right? And Doflamingo like, ha no, and shoot him, you know? And then Bellamy like, yeah. I feel like maybe Bellamy could be... Yeah, you know, he could probably aid in some way. It's not going to be like he's going to be the deciding factor in the fight. Like I could see him kind of landing a blow in on Doflamingo, kind of like and the first thing that popped in my head is like with DBZ when Gohan and Cell are having the big Kamehameha battle, and Vegeta's the one that fires a blast into Cell that kind of like tips things in Gohan's favor. Something like that I could see. Yeah, I I like that. I like that. I, I think that that Bellamy, like you know, Oda can still use. I mean, hell, Oda can use anyone that he he wants because that's that's kind of just what he does. You know, if he gets an idea, he'll he'll run with it. But I I feel like Bellamy Bellamy was useful as you know an introduction as a uh, kind of he he was sort of like a foil to to Doflamingo's attitude. You know, when he failed, we we saw some of of Doflamingo's kind of um view of the world when he gave that speech and was like you know don't come groveling back to me sort of thing uh and you know his his reappearance in this arc i think was kind of just like fan service basically i don't think that oda has like a big plan for bellamy or you know like oh my god he was like this all along um sort of thing unless you know he he kind of retcons an idea like oh well what if they were related but i i don't see that happening i think that he was basically just like a you know early on he was a this is kind of what doflamingo's organization is about and Mm -hmm. uh is is ultimately just kind of a pawn not everyone has to be related. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I think it's cliche at a point. I, I think people go a little, I, I think people lean a little too much towards that trope to kind of like really push some sort of like interesting plot twist. And even though we kind of just had that with Corazon, we don't That's always true. need we did that. Just get that. I think, like, if anything, One Piece, the story kind of proves that, you know, you don't have to be related by blood to be family. That's, I think, one of the most important messages of, this, of the mm-hmm. show. So it's a I, good message, yeah. I, so I don't think that plot twist has to be done. I feel like we've seen so much of it already in One Piece that you know, it doesn't have to be the case. Asabo is a walking example of that because mm-hmm. his family was a bunch of douchebags. Um, I'm sorry, schmucks. Um, Alexander... <laughs> Uh, asks, I don't know uh, if this question's been asked before, but do you think one of the reasons, one of the reasons, uh, Dragon is the most wanted man is because he may have or know how to get one of the ancient weapons? Or do you think he just wouldn't care about that? He, I think hmm. he... I'm going to go out on a limb here. Crazy theory. I, I really think the revolutionaries are the ones with the key to the void century in the world. And I think that's, yeah. I think that's part of the reason. I don't think it has to do with the ancient weapons maybe because i don't know where that fits in yet in that whole uh history yeah but i mean the fact that robin was there just solidifies that i that's their role they are they are the continuation of that ancient kingdom and and they're gonna get rid of this evil empire that's going on here right yeah that's that is my that that's my interpretation of of the way things are are being said because you know they, they've been you know, Oda was hinting at a, you know, revolutionary army or, you know, sort of revolutionary forces around the world, like way, way back in like, you know, in the um, like not long after they went on to the Grand Line. Um, the someone, town, because Dragon yeah, there's like, yeah. yeah, well, that was where Dragon appeared. And then there was there was like there was a scene where Nami gets a newspaper from a news coup and was like, oh, there's another coup d'etat in, in Vila or something like that. And then someone asked him in SBS and he's like, oh, yeah, you'll see that eventually, like what's going on there. Uh, and that was, you know, like back in the bro work saga. So, um, yeah, I think that that is definitely what Oda is setting up here. He just hasn't gotten around to making it, you know, apparent to everyone yet. And we also had a cameo from remember dragon's picture in a uh, drum island uh, i think it's something that's been it's it's very in the background and i think it's something that's probably very on oda's mind and it's 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest, the thing I am most excited to see in, in this series is that clash. Um, yeah. I, different people have different opinions, but for me, that is that is the heart of what I love, this, this kind of big overarching stuff. So I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, all right. Brayden says a couple small questions first. Uh, if there was a chance that you guys have ever considered coming to Fan Expo in Toronto, I was hoping that you may come, uh, might come to Anime North, uh, that, but that didn't happen. Um, I don't know where. I don't know when that is. Uh, I'll look it up. I'll let you know. Um, I don't know, though. It depends. It completely depends when and monetarily if that's possible. Um, and second, for Stephen or anyone else that could answer it, but he was curious how long you have been a translator for One Piece. Stephen, yeah. Uh, so for One Piece specifically, I started when the weekly digital Shonen Jump uh, began from Viz, and that was January of 2012. Uh, so that's about two and a half years. That was at the very end of Fishman Island. And uh, as a professional translator overall, I've been since late 2005. So coming up on 10 years. Um, and one last question. If you could assign... <clears throat> what real life job would you assign each straw hat? Um, I'll, uh, not obviously not their real job. So, you know, mm. like chef or archeologist or whatever. Um, just choose like one or two. Don't go through all of them since that'll take a while. Um, I feel like Sanji would be a good like nightclub bouncer. Like he just let all the hot ladies in and kick everyone else away. That's a good question. I, I think, think that's more. Well, yeah, go, go. I think that's, uh, that's more well suited for Frankie. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, the only reason why I feel like that is because um, his fight in Punk Hazard, he was kind of pretty. Even though he's 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 a pretty much a nonsense character, he was like no nonsense with fighting them. He was kind of straightforward with just dealing with them. I feel like that's the that's the mentality of a you know of a of a bouncer there. You just kind of just pick up people. I'm like, all right, you're gone. Super boom, laser. You're, you're, <laughs> you're not anymore. That's, that's the uh, dialogue. <laughs> I feel like Zoro, Zoro should be like the tour guide on like a, like a, like a zoo safari or something like that goes on a monorail. So there's no like choices of direction to go. So. <laughs> uh, um, Usopp is a used car salesman. Yes. <laughs> Wow, that's a good yeah. one. Or a lawyer. That's, that's or great. a lawyer. Uh, Usopp would be fantastic in our profession. He'd be a great lawyer. I could see him like an Ace Attorney character because he he's just over emotional. You know, he exaggerates so much. He'd freak out when things aren't looking good. Yeah, a used car salesman or a uh, or a lawyer. No, I don't. Yeah. I think Usopp would actually be get disbarred within his first week. Um, <laughs> uh, to be completely honest, uh, it depends how what state he's in, I guess. But. Um, uh, let me think. Nami. What would Nami do? I want to go outside of the straw hat so badly because I feel like there's... Like oh, oh, we're not limited to just straw hats. Or any well, hair. we could do whatever the hell we want, but the question was for straw I think hats. That's also a challenge with the straw hats because we already that's know true. what they do. That's true. Like, what Do you think um, Robin as a librarian is a little too safe? Yeah, that's too safe. I think I, I could see her as a teacher, you know, as a college professor. Yeah. You know what I see Usopp as? As a lawyer, as a politician. He would be a fantastic <laughs> politician. You're absolutely right. That's coming from someone who also loves politics. So and he's he's always thinking of the bottom line. He well, is good he, for Usopp. And but he also understands the people, and he's able to speak to the people, or as some sort of cult religious figure. I think would also be a possibility, but that might be too close to his real job. Um, I think I think Brooke should definitely get a job in like movie stunts for horror movies or something. <laughs> Brooke is kind of. Don't even need it. any makeup. Uh, I could Nami would work any job where uh, it pays on commission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think because Nami... she'd be able, she'd be able to easily trick people into buying stuff. I think Nami would be um, a, a great stock uh, broker. Um, <laughs> I, I, you, you know uh the wolf of wall street her oh, yeah. there just with like a female i they did a female trailer for what the wolf of wall street would look like if it were all women 
and the men reversed, which is kind of mm-hmm. interesting. But I think Nami would fit in that role perfectly. So we, we so we'd see a lot of male genitalia. Yeah, it's well, no, we did see some male genitalia in the actual film too. So mm-hmm. yeah, oh yeah, that is or, true. or if it was if it was in Japan, she she could totally be uh, like at a hostess club. Uh, where her her job is to just wine and dine people and get them to buy expensive She'd be bottles. She's terrible service. at that though. She just insult them the entire time, and you know it. No, I... unless that's the theme of, of that club. What would Chopper be? Uh, be really savvy. Like she, like she would just, she would just rip them off really well. I bet. Uh, Chopper. I don't know. Besides, he's such a doctor. That's all he thinks about. <laughs> um. And Luffy, he's such a captain. <laughs> veterinarian. I guess Chopper would be Chopper would be the veterinarian for other animals. Yeah, um, he'd be a perfect veterinarian. Um, <sighs> Sanji, I'm trying to think of Sanji working somewhere that's not a restaurant. An actor. He can be an actor. He would you know? because he'd hang out with the beautiful people. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he has the suave kind of. I could see him just getting a bad attitude and barking at his director. Oh yeah, totally complete diva. Yeah. It's like we already did the take twenty times. <laughs> it's done. Okay. Uh, I think that's a good place to leave things, right? Unless we're missing. And well, and Law would be a blue jeans model. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, Come on, Stephen. You, you, you what about uh, what about Luffy? Um, I think we got. What's a professional that, eater? <laughs> he wouldn't be a food <laughs> critic because he doesn't care about what things taste like. He just eats them. Yeah, um, yeah. That's no, that's pretty good. You'd be a, a professional food comp- eating competition. Oh yeah, you'd be like uh, what's his face um, Kobayashi. Yeah, or. Uh, What's the new one? Chestnut. Joey Chestnut, right? That's his name. I could see him being a delivery boy. I could also see him like a fry kind of yeah. thing going on there. Yeah. Like fry. Like fry. <laughs> Actually, that fits perfectly. Oh, my God. He'd be Philip J. Fry. Um, all right. That's, uh, that's round that enough. That's enough, <laughs> enough time spent on that. Yeah. yeah let's round it off. I had fun with that, though. I thought that was going to be a hard thing to answer. This has been the unofficial One Piece podcast, episode 325 for the week of Monday, June 23rd, 2014. Uh, Remember, what is this, two weeks uh, Anime Expo? Um, Or less than that? Uh, Two weeks. Two weeks. Um, We're going to be at Anime Expo. Uh, Steve will be there. Steven will be there. Uh, Jammer will be around, but not on Friday, I know. Uh, Dennis, of course, will be there. Good people at Viz and Funimation. I'm probably missing people from our group who will be there. Make sure to... uh, Here's your schedule. Go through it quickly. Uh, Cosplay meetup, 2 p.m. Friday, July 4th. Uh, The One Piece Industry panel, Friday, July 4th at 4.30 p.m. in LP1. Uh, Our panel, the One Piece podcast panel, Friday, July 4th at 7.30 p.m. Pacific in LP4. And then the One Piece podcast goes to Japan in videos 3 at 9.30 a.m. on July 5th. Uh, If you miss any one of those, I don't even know if we could talk anymore. Not that, you know, we were talking to all of you, but go to all of those uh, or as many of those as you possibly can. Uh, and and enjoy it. Um, we'll also be at Otakon. That's going to be uh, August eighth uh, through eleventh, I think, or tenth um, that weekend. Uh, and that's that's all I know of what we're doing in the next few weeks. Um, things get a little crazy over the summer. I, I forget because uh, I have a bit, I wasn't here last summer. Um, Ed is off still doing. How convenient. A, I know. Ed is off having his summer uh, studying for the bar still. Um, We're excited to have him back, uh, I guess, probably the first or second week uh, in August, for those uh, wondering where he is. Um, Yeah, I think before we round off, uh, Stephen, where can people find you? Uh, Well, you can follow me on Twitter at Translatosaurus, and that's about it. Steve? You can find me in a bunch of places. You can find me on Twitter at Steve Yurko. You can find me on Tumblr at steveyurko.tumblr.com. Also, be sure to read my new webcomic, Jason the Princes of the Universe, uh, at jasoncomic.tumblr.com. Um, you know, I'm on DeviantArt too. I got my own website. 
You know, I was uh, I, I've read through the, uh, the your comic up to at least through the pages that are released at this point. Um, and I don't know why it's called Princess of the Universe. Or is that something I'm going to find out at some point? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you have it all written out? Um, I have a lot of it planned out. I have, like, the first two chapters written out right now. Okay. That's cool. I'm not, I'm, I'm not Oda. Well, no one could be Oda. Well, I don't, th- I don't think Oda has had everything completely written out. Too. No, he, no. He thought he it was, was going to end in five years. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> Uh, no, we're really happy Oda's back. Um, chapter six, uh, 751 will be next week. I'm excited to do the manga for that. But uh, before we get into all that, Steve, how could the good people out there contact us? You can go to our website. That's onepiecepodcast.com. Contact us at, uh, at our email at onepiece at gmail.com. Follow us on all the cool social media sites like facebook.com slash onepiecepodcast. Twitter.com slash onepiecepodcast. Onepiecepodcast.tumblr.com. We're also on Stitcher Radio. Uh, make sure you subscribe, rate, and review to us on iTunes. Am I missing anything else, Zach? Uh, we're also on SoundCloud now. That's SoundCloud. Oh yeah, that's right. We are on SoundCloud. One piece so, of podcast. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a cool site. I think you know if you don't want to download our episode, at least you could just play them off of there. I know I've listened to a podcast on SoundCloud without uh, downloading it. So I know I know we have a lot of listeners who listen on the computer, which is actually we have a very weird uh, demographic audience. I think for podcasts, that's a good thing. Like mm-hmm. uh, a lot, a lot of our listeners like long episodes, which is unusual for podcasts. And a lot of our listeners like to listen on their computer, which is also very unusual versus an iPhone, iPad, Android. Um, but SoundCloud works on all of those. So if you have an Android or whatever mm-hmm. it may be, you could listen to it on that as well. So people a, a lot of times ask me, how do I listen on this device? Uh, so we're on SoundCloud. Uh, if you're somehow listening to this and don't know how to listen to us, that is how. Um, Steve, I think that's... Is that everything? Unless we figure out how they could listen to us on cassette players. Well, we'll get that started right away. Um, is there another way they could contact us? Hmm. Hmm. Steve. I think they could. Hmm. Uh, unless they would, like, they would want to somehow talk to us or leave a, a message of their actual voice, how could they do that? Oh, right. We have a phone number. That phone number is 347-497-MAJI. Maji. That phone number is 347-497-6254. Call anytime. Call anytime. Call anytime. With your co- questions. Call anytime. <laughs> with your questions, comments, theories, and reasons why our jokes get old very quick. Uh, no, they but, don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Reasons why our jokes remain incredible after all this time. <laughs> uh, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Oh, if you want to contact me, uh, you could go twitter.com slash Zach underscore Logan. That's E A C H underscore L O G A N. Um, and I'm also still on Ask FM under the same name. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, yeah. Questions. Questions. Ask me questions too on my Tumblr. Uh, yeah, when when uh, there's a brief boredom in the day, that's a, that's always good to do. Which is most of my days. So. Which is never anymore for me. So I'm, I apologize <laughs> if I don't answer as frequently. I'm still bored, people. <laughs> Ask Steve questions. Um, so next week we'll be back with a manga recap of chapter 751, anime recap of uh, 651, and tsunami recap for 660. I think it is or something like that. I don't, uh, 260. I'm sorry. Uh, some something around there. Uh, But for the unofficial One Piece podcast, my name is Zach. And my name is Steve. We'll see everyone next week. Goodbye. Toodles. This is the unofficial One Piece podcast, episode 324. Is that the number? I don't know. I'm going to find out, though. Yeah, it was. I was right. Shit, I should have stuck with that. Keep going. No.